Hello, it's the talk over. And I, I can hear you out there. I know what you're saying. Sometimes you just can't take it anymore. You got to stand up. You got to run to the window and you got to yell, hey, these floors are dirty as hell. And I'm not going to take it anymore because we live in a we live in a twilight world and there's no friends at midnight. Oh, I was trying to get all of that out before I ran out of breath. Jesse, how are you today? Thank you for joining me on the talk over. Wonderful. How are you? <laughs> Doing really good. Mildly stressed, just like every single episode. But I have been looking forward to this episode for so long. J is for January, episode one. I got Jesse on the show, and we're starting the year out right. Avatar, highest grossing movie of all time. And it starts with A. We've checked all the OCD boxes. Jesse, mm-hmm. not that it needs it, not that it needs defending, but can you tell the lovely people at home if they were on the fences about renting Avatar, what would you say is your personal touchstone to that? What do you like about it? Well, wonderful question. I've thought about this since you ended your question. Um, Wait till the break time. <laughs> Avatar got a lot of hate. Huh? Got a lot of hate. Avatar got a lot of hate. It does. A lot of smoke. A lot of smoke that I don't think that it deserves. I agree. This movie took four years to make. Okay. I didn't know that. You can spend two and a half hours watching this beautiful masterpiece. (laughs) Excellently said. I, when I, when I start up my blockbuster, I'm going to hire you for it. Well, part of the reason that we're watching it is that Jesse and I was, were messaging back and forth and she was like, you never watched Avatar. And she's like, I thought you liked movies. And I was like, I just, I haven't watched it, but I'm not going to make fun of it until I've seen it. So I guess I'll never make fun of it. And then two days later, a copy of it showed up at my door because Jesse (laughs) knew one thing you can guilt me into watching a movie just by spending your hard-earned money so I watched it and I had a wonderful time with this movie had a great great time and it shouldn't surprise me I I we were talking about this the other night when we were doing just sort of testing on the audio and stuff and and you were saying you know you don't really pay attention to directors this show Mm -hmm. the talk over has given me an opportunity to talk about some of the bigger directors because I've gotten to talk with people that also don't think that way when i end up talking with movie nerds i can't tell them the facts that i know about things because they already know them so when i talk to people that don't focus on it, i can bring up why things are, are important so like a few episodes ago we were talking about steven spielberg who was an exec producer on monster house with zemeckis i brought up uh, george lucas george lucas is sort of the connective tissue through what's known as the fog city mavericks those are the greatest filmmakers of all time a lot of people that came out of usc were talking about a lot of francis ford coppola's people if you ever want to see just why they're why these people are i don't know why that school is so amazing google usc alum and you'll see all the directors that came out of there um and james cameron did not come out of there james cameron oh hello aaron also hi chad he's in the chat right now how are you everybody thanks for joining us um you've joined me for uh for for uh movie lessons right now so james cameron um to talk about james cameron i gotta back up a little bit because i gotta talk about george lucas george <laughs> lucas took and he made um this wonderful little short film called thx 1138 and then he went to the godfather of filmmaking uh francis ford coppola and he said hey i want to make this space opera and francis was like "Ah, oh, cool you're not going to though i want you to go make a comedy show me you can make a comedy and then i'll let you make your little space film and he made american graffiti he made one of the greatest films of all time and took the money he made and created something called ilm it's a company that makes special effects and at the time they only made special effects for star wars they pushed the limits of technology to the point that we were able to make jurassic park when we did jurassic park still looks incredible even though it's a a steven spielberg film it was lucas's technology at ilm that was able to push that forward ilm also made a few other things they accidentally made a little program that they sold called uh, photoshop the first film that was ever used, uh, ever used Photoshop to make was The Abyss, which James Cameron also made. We're talking about one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Probably the worst movie that James Cameron's made is The Terminator. That's the low bar that we're talking about here. I absolutely adore his movies. I love every single one of them. And Terminator 2 is one of the greatest action films of all time. So it makes a lot of sense that this man will have made the great, the, the most highest grossing movie of all time. I'm not going to say it's the greatest movie of all time. But it's an awesome movie and it's a lot of fun and it definitely doesn't deserve the smoke. And so when Jesse suggested movies, I said, please, can we watch Avatar? This would be wonderful. So I stumbled a little bit over the history of it, but we're going to get into it now. This is a long movie, folks, because in a minute, I'm going to count three, two, one, go. We're all going to be a bunch of Fonzies and click go one go. I'm going to put a timer up on the screen. Normally, we take a break at the hour mark. I made a judgment call today, folks. I hope you went to PP because we're going to do it at one at the hour and 30 mark. It's going to be a five minute timer. Spoilers, the video is longer than five minutes and we'll we'll talk about the movie. So you got plenty of time. Use the bathroom, wash your hands, get your snacks and come back. So without anything else, Jesse, you ready to start this movie? 
I am. All yes. right. Every time I do this, I don't have my thing on the right thing. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Oh, I nailed it. It's so loud in my one ear. I do want to correct something, though. Uh oh. You totally made fun of this movie. You gave me so much shit for liking this movie. <laughs> what did I say? So much shit. What did I say? What is that movie? Is it Fern Gully? Well, okay. So look, everybody made that joke. You? Everybody made the Fern Gully joke. I didn't want to make the Fern Gully joke. That's why I said but I you did. Fun. Okay. You didn't want to. I got one in there. <laughs> you did. It's just the same. Now, here's what the I will They think they're just blue. <laughs> I will. There is one thing I will give this movie heat about papyrus, and that's because I'm a font snob and I got weird sense of humor. But papyrus is for if you're adventuring with mummies only. You should never use that font for. The, but now it's that's synonymous fair. with Avatar. So at least he at least he didn't pick like wingdings or something. Um, Chad says oh, comic uh, sand. <laughs> Avatar. Um, <laughs> James Cameron doesn't know how to make quiet movies. He definitely doesn't. It kicks it in there. Now, what's interesting about this feller, he's in a little movie called Terminator Salvation. I don't know how much um, I don't know how much pull Cameron has over Terminator movies past the second one. But that movie also got a lot of shade. This guy was in two huge movies that people really liked making fun of. That I think are great. I love Terminator Salvation. I have never seen that. That's pretty good. Any pretty Terminator good. movie. <gasps> Terminator 2 is wonderful. So... I did read that mm -hmm. James Cameron actually came up with the idea of mm -hmm. this movie in 1999. Okay. But the technology wasn't uh -huh. there for the graphics mm -hmm. and all the CGI and, and all that stuff. And it was after he saw Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, he was like, okay, we've made it. Now we can make this movie interesting okay well so yeah he's always been well he pushed the limits of tech he forwarded the advancement of deep sea exploration to make a movie about leonardo dicaprio painting a naked lady on a boat he did that movie yeah yeah and, and on top of that too when the ocean the titanic sub sank they went to james cameron and was like where did it go wrong and i thought he was going to be like hey that's a certain people died. I don't want it. But no, he was like, let me tell you where they messed up. The first starters. This is this isn't easy. And he was like, really taking them to task over it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, Let's see. Uh, uh, Aaron says, Which I, uh, I, oh, what's up? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, Aaron go says, ahead. haha, there's a whole Teen Titans Go episode about font. I should check that out. <laughs> and uh, she says it's legit hilarious. I'll look into that. What were you saying, Jay? I was just saying, I thought it was interesting that he didn't think it was the graphics mm -hmm. and all that techy stuff was good enough after the uh, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> not the, the Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring, <laughs> was the second one, which is the best one. I like Undisputed. The one a lot. Fight I, me. <laughs> I, I agree. It has less less to it. We have a mutual friend, Brandon, and he went to watch the first Lord of the Rings when it was in the theater. And he, he also he worked at Blockbuster, the movie theater and books a million at the time. And so he comes in and he's like, I said, oh, you watch Lord of the Rings. How was it? And he's like, oh, man, I hated how it ended. Now, I got to rewind a little bit because a few weeks earlier, he said, oh, man, I read the Divine Yaya Sisterhood, whatever that Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. So when you fast back forward to him saying he didn't know the end of the first Lord of the Rings would be a cliffhanger. I was like, you read the Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood and didn't think to crack Tolkien. He was like, ah, people were buying it. I thought there was something to it. I do like the second. I one will well. say. I did try to reread those books Oof. as an adult. Who has the time? Well, mine was audiobooks because <laughs> I don't have the time or the patience. One of my favorite things though, Jay, about you is that you you're a low key movie nerd. Like you don't go you don't have to be like me where you're yuts and talk about it all the time. You 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 start talking to you for a second, you're like, oh yeah, she's probably not into movies. You're the first person I knew to do a Lord of the Rings marathon. So the extended editions too. Every year. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. So in the fall, you know how people watch like Harry Potter around Christmas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, that's my Lord of the Rings. I add those to my Christmas watch. They were on my list uh, this year. I got all the Harry Potters and Lord of the Rings in. Not the extended editions. I'm lazy. I was running out my of time. My thing is, is just the, like, I don't remember. What's that? Stuff. Oh, don't I don't stuff. remember stuff. Nah. So if I watch it, you're going to be like, oh, what was the best part? I'm like, oh, well, this character, <laughs> what's his name? I don't know. Oh, I don't remember any characters. The main, the... <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. I, give I just remember I liked it. You know where James Cameron got the inspiration for this movie from? Americans? Very close. <laughs> Pocahontas. <laughs> oh, hey! Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll... Which just goes back to, like, how many truly, like, original ideas and storylines are there? Oh, there's not there's nothing new under the sun. And as far as the like, you know, talking about this being Fern Gully, I feel like he could probably draw a stronger comparison to other stuff. The life tree has been something of like Norse mythology. It's been around since the beginning of life. So it's it's not it's not the same thing. I'm I didn't think I made that joke. I thought I stopped just short and made my own joke, but no, I wasn't that clever. Oh no. You were we we got into it. I mean, was we weren't like really mad at each other. Yes. I don't remember. Yeah, we all. got into it, and you were like, "Why do they keep rec- <laughs> recreating movies? Why can't anybody come up with a new idea?" Oh my god! And I, I was like, "It's was beautiful. Just watch it." Uh, <laughs> you just could have been. It just could have been a day for you. Who knows? Oh wow! Yeah, I was real pissed at James Cameron for some reason. <laughs> and that's why I spent my hard-earned money to mail you a DVD. You did the Lord's work. You didn't just send me a DVD. It's I noticed today. It's a 3D DVD and DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so cool. nice. That's awesome. I forgot. It, it, it has a lenticular cover. It's very special. <laughs> I remember, I don't remember who it was, but someone was like, are you not going to put a card in there or a return address? I and I was like, from. no, it's much better. <laughs> He'll know. He'll know. <laughs> yeah, when it showed up, I was like, what's this? I teared up and I'm like, oh, like instantly I knew everything. So, I so remember th- you texting me being like, are you fucking kidding me? Now I have to watch this? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, winner. That's hilarious. It's one of my favorite like movie things ever. So, so this movie now has a personal touchstone for me as well. But I, I, I waited a while and then popped it in because I legitimately was uh, was interested. And had a great time. Watched it on the projector. It was huge. Where's this guy from? He's in a bunch of things. Isn't he, he in a bunch? Yeah, he's kind of one of those character actors that. Hey, a lot of times he ends up with like mostly silent roles because he's got that crazy stare. Got those massive forehead wrinkles. I man, I forgot he was in a wheelchair. That's kind of like a big important part of this story. <laughs> oh my god, I watched. I was watching Grandma's Boy like four or five days ago. That's uh, this JT. Oh that, my god, yeah. Gonna get metal legs. <laughs> uh, Chad says it's Stephen Lane, King of Clutch. Chad, thank you, buddy. Chad, what's like a big thing he's done? There's gotta be like one big thing where we all go, oh. I might be asking too much. I feel like he's the guy that got typecast as like tough, the hard ass. Mm-hmm. We used to have a lot more actors like that uh, in the nineties. Like I like uh, James Cameron would have worked with most of them. Like people that are always um, some kind of a gruff military guy or uh, he checks his avatar too. Oh, he made it. <laughs> okay. I didn't think he, I didn't think many people here made it, but I, I'm misremembering. I can't wait to I, man. My favorite parts in the last half, and not not. Don't breathe. He's the guy in the house with the thing that you can't make a noise because he'll find you and kill you. That's who that guy. Yes, thank you, Chad. Ah, it's killing me. Also, nice tribal tribal tattoo. I said I wasn't gonna make fun of this movie. I'm sorry. I just saw tribal. And I couldn't. Help you can it. you can make fun of tribal tribal tattoos. <laughs> you can't even say it right. That's fair. <laughs> I can't talk, man. It's been a long day. I woke up at eight o'clock this morning. I looked outside and said, nope. And then I was like, I'm going back to bed. And I heard the dulcet tones of snowblowers. And I thought, well, I'm awake now. I did not do much today. I took a two hour lunch. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Tones L and bosses. 
I saw two golden retrievers at Lowe's today. At the same time? Yes. I had already nicknamed them the Golden Girls. But turns out one was male and one was female. And you best believe I petted them. This is at Lowe's? And I told the owners, yes. On my way back from lunch, I ran an errand because I'm an adult. Okay. And I told, I was like, are they boys or girls? And they were like, well, one's boy, one's girl. I said, well, I'll have you know, I've already nicknamed them the Golden Girls. <laughs> I've spent so much time in Lowe's. <laughs> I've renamed your animals collectively. Um, Chad yes. says uh, this vlog from Sam has big Starship or Troop vibes. Would you like to know more? Jay, have you ever seen Starship Treasures? Oh, man, that was huge when Star we were in high school. Rip Troopers? Starship Troopers, yeah. Starship. Like a spaceship. Starship. Starship. Mm -mm, no. Oh, man. Never heard of it. It's really, really good. It's uh, based off an old, like, like a satire novel sort of parroting the industrial military complex, but it's, like, really dark, and it's got uh, Neil Patrick Harris, Casper Van Dien, uh, Clancy Brown's in it. A bunch of just a ton, ton of people are in it. It's um, it's a Verhoeven film, so it's like uh, it's got some of the violence, like RoboCop and stuff like that. Oh, it's oh, it's oh, look, it's Papyrus. I always forget Sigourney Weaver's in this man because Cameron also did Aliens, arguably the best one. So James Cameron actually brought in a ling. Say it for me. Linguist. Ling Thank you. Linguisticus. Uh, to yes, <laughs> to create a language. Oh, so he, he did like Tolkien. Mm -hmm. G mm -hmm. Cameron now, who's being mm -hmm. derivative? He's stealing mm -hmm. phrases. I'm going to make my own. If he can do it, I can do. I'm James Cameron. He doesn't sound mm -hmm. like that. By the way, he just did a, <laughs> um, a video. I believe it's for GQ. It was directors on directors with Greta Gerwig, and it's awesome because he's. They talk more about um, hoping the audience has a good time as opposed to I hope the audience gets it. And I mostly hear directors saying, I hope they understand what I was going for. Whereas they're going, I just want them to have, I want it to be as much fun as it was in my head. And I think that's pretty incredible that they both were just like, do you ever worry about the stuff you're doing? And Cameron's like, yes, I ask everybody in the room. Um, it's a good conversation. It's nice. Oh my God, Giovanni Ribisi. What ha where'd he go? Sneaky Pete, gone and went. I haven't seen a Mr. Ribisi in a minute. She's smoking <laughs> no. no vapes. And she wished she ta that tasted like banana pudding. <laughs> yeah, why do you, yeah. I, hmm? I really wish that like all this stuff we're seeing is like a thing in our lifetime. I want the minority report computer so bad. Yes. He's, yes. Oh, I need I wanna, that. Oh my, the Tony Stark wanna, desk. Yeah, I can't. I need more dimensions. I want to do this. Yes. <laughs> I'm so annoyed of seeing it like in movies and stuff. And we're not, we better. Well, like, I don't even care if I'm 70. Mm -hmm. We just got to keep doing it. I mean, that's how we ended up with the cell phone. We got a cell phone because Star Trek. So, ah, unobtainium is actually a material that does not exist in physics. If you're trying to do an equation and you need to solve it with something that doesn't exist or can't be synthesized, you call it unobtainium. Science facts from the talk over. Something new every day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is that a was that a uh, was that a dr uh, dream catcher in a frame? I thought I was just looking at. Huh? Just they even put it in a frame. That's incredible. It goes well with the tribal tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> just circling that back in. There was a time tribal tattoos, dream catchers, yin yang symbols. Uh, Chad says, "God damn it, Sigourney, I'm explaining the plot here." <laughs> I just want that to sleep in. That looks extremely comfortable. Oh my gosh. 
Let me look, I, let me ask you something. Let me, Jay, listen real quick. I need I need to ask a question without judgment. I'm asking everybody at home too. I'm not saying it has to be a real coffin, but if you were given the chance to sleep in a coffin-like box for a night, no locks on it, nothing weird, just comfortable, and you could close it up, would you? Because I would. One thousand percent. Sounds awesome, right? One thousand percent. Just a box. Yes. Ah. Oh. They make sleep pods, but if you put one in your like house, like you feel all cozy. I know you would even sleep like this. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I sleep like this <laughs> on my back, so I'm already prepping. Like if I had like a, they can a, just pick a you bouquet up. of flowers. Uh huh. So I would just have to switch like to like this. I feel like I could do that. That's hilarious. That's genius. Oh, I would have to have a sound machine and a fan. Mm hmm. Yeah, my, it is the south. My my problem is just that it's uh, if somebody came to my house, I'd have to be like, well, that's my sleep pod. And then they'd be like, well, I got to Hey, I got to go. Uh, sleep pod. Yeah. Like Abby from NCIS. Did you ever watch that show? Oh, does she sleep in like a sleep pod kind of thing? It's sensory deprivation. Yeah, like the goth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch the show. I know. Yeah, her, she though. sleeps in. Yeah, she sleeps in a coffin. <laughs> so does I would totally I would totally do it. I think so, too. I just can't. I can't get past the sorry, mom, I sleep in a coffin. I won't tell her if you won't. <laughs> she knows she'll find out. <laughs> also, too, Nate used to tease me for being goth and I was like, I'm not goth. And he's like, how many black shirts you got? I'm like, shut up. Well, same. so yeah. it, is it, is. it is what it is. We are who we are. See, that's how I don't want to wake up with two people in my face like that. I would totally, I would love to have like, and I mean, I wouldn't want to, I don't really want to appropriate other people, but I mean, be really freaking cool. It's for science though. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, okay, we so can as long skirt as the line a little bit. <laughs> you keep records and you have a theory about it. It's okay. It's for science. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I got to point out, it's this was so, yeah, he worked like, I think you said four years on this. So 2009 is when it came out. So mm -hmm. he started at a time when the tech was good enough to do this in 2005. It's almost 20 years later. This looks amazing. And I'm wa watching on this potato ass TV. It looks great. And the first Lord of the Rings came out 2002, 2003. Yeah. Yeah. It still looks, it still looks pretty good. There's. Not maybe one or two places where it's like, Ugh, but the like mm -hmm. ninety eight percent of it's perfect. <laughs> that's so weird yeah. that it's JT that's like he's gonna put you out. <laughs> How does he see me? So like, do you get self conscious? Like if you're in someone else's body and your butt cheeks are just hanging out like that? No. Like, are you like, no, nah, man, if I was tall and skinny, I would take my clothes off and run and I'm blue. Are you kidding me? I'm not splotchy and, and wobbly and weird. I mean, he's kind of wobbly, but you mean he can dunk a ball. <laughs> I would dunk a ball naked. Incredible. And can you imagine, you know, like the Jordan symbol, <laughs> but the legs spread <laughs> and the tail. tail yeah. <laughs> oh, no, but I want a mech suit. Mech suits are fun. Although I feel like a mech suit would fall over a lot. What's a mech suit? That thing you just bumped into. Like a like a oh. big robot suit. Like a Gundam or a Zord. That's honestly why I just love this movie so much. It's just beautiful. It is pretty. It does. Ha I think I, if I had to give it one critique, it does have a pinch of like a um, like an uncanny valley kind of thing going on. But I think that's just a, a trait of getting that close to making it look so lifelike. I mean, you're going to have to you got to go through that valley. So it's um, I mean, that's the direction you would want to go. You wouldn't want to go the other way because then it would it wouldn't hold up as long. So at least this after a few minutes in, you're like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. There's another movie that's got very similar looking creatures that I like a lot called Valerian's The City of a Thousand Planets. Um, 
that movie is really under me. I probably like that movie because you got me to watch this movie. So um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, You're welcome. But it's it's one I highly recommend. It pops up on streaming services every now and then, but it's it's like the biggest cult classic ever made. Not that it's popular, just they spend a lot of money on it. So they actually uh, had to edit this movie as they were filming it. <laughs> like I mean, like not in the moment, but they would film for order? so many months, and then and then. I, well, I don't know about the order oh, okay. part. Like, that's they insane. would film so many sections, and then they would go to edit them because okay. it took them four years to do it. You got to go ahead and start rendering out the shots too. Um, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I talk about editing a lot because in my head, I think of myself as an editor first, and I think most people that learn how to edit think of themselves as an editor too. I forgot Michelle Rodriguez, Letty. All right, um, love her. Love Michelle Rodriguez. She's she's one of our actors. She was getting big when we were cut, we're like growing up in high school and stuff. So she was in all mm -hmm. the best stuff. Yeah. God, uh, one of the best commentary tracks ever is her on Resident Evil with Mila Jovovich. Best commentary track I've ever heard. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Now. Editors. So I listen to a lot of conversations. Some of my favorite ones are between John Favreau and Robert Rodriguez because Robert convinced John Favreau to start editing his own movies because he's like, I don't understand somebody else editing your movie because that's like letting somebody cook in your own kitchen. So if you got the stuff, make it yourself. And then a lot of people have switched to either filming it with like multiple cameras that they can have a lower render or, or some other processes where they literally can, when they're done shooting for the day, somebody edit the scenes like Kevin Smith did that with clerks uh, too. He was editing the scenes while they were making it. That's a much smaller movie and he didn't have to render out any, you know, assets or anything, you know, digital. It was just shooting dialogue and he would go to his hotel room and he would edit and then he could invite people that are in the movie over to be like, this is the scene we shot today. Um, it's efficient. It's fast. It's good. When do you sleep, though? <laughs> I have questions. Sleep. I'm a nap girly. <laughs> yeah. I like sleep. I just don't. Uh, I just. Not good at it. I should do a sleep study. You I'm, probably should. I'm afraid of what the fuck. I out. did a sleep study. Really? And I had all the wires. Yeah. Did they figure out if you could have telekinetic while you're sleeping? <laughs> anyway. That's a bummer, to be honest. <laughs> you wake up, you're like, do I have superpowers? No. Ah, why did I do this? What they find they out? They were like, from? Um, that I stop breathing like a lot. <laughs> do you do you wake up sometimes? Like, because <gasps> I do a lot. No, <laughs> oh no, because I'm such a heavy sleeper Whoa. that I. Alex said that he used to watch me, be like. <laughs> Well, that's creepy, but oh, but, but she's breathing. It's okay. <laughs> but you're already laying like this, and you're not breathing. You're poor. I'm ready husband. to go, man. I am ready to go. <laughs> Beam me up. <laughs> Jesus. No, all of my dreams are the most stressful thing you can imagine. And sometimes I wake up because I'm not breathing. And then other times I just don't want to go to bed. I'm having too much fun living life. I did recently watch something where they were describing this different type of sleep cycle that you can actually pull off getting four hours of sleep a day by doing. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's it's a uh, four hours of sleep in 20 minute segments. But the problem is you got to be available like every two hours of sleep for 20 minutes. I don't have you know, that much time where I can stop and go, I got to go away from everything for 20 minutes. So if I could, I might try it. Just see what it's like for a couple of weeks. Like every two hours, like throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, think I know that... how that goes. Okay. <laughs> I'll read more about it before I do it, but <laughs> I can't do it with like the job I have now or anything like that, but. If I am ever in a place where I can do different things and stuff with my day, then I'll um, tell you what, if we can get a million people watching the talk over, I'll experiment on it <laughs> and I'll stream it. Gosh, darn it. We'll watch movies the whole time. That's the other thing, too. I can't go to I can't go to sleep unless something's playing and then when something's playing. I end up watching it. So like I I need <laughs> I need drugs, man. 
Now I'm oh, I'm gonna yeah. bring up what this what I think of it. This happened first, but I'm a huge fan of the new Star Wars video games. The last two that came out that were Jedi Survivor and uh, I think Fallen Order. Chad will correct me if I'm wrong. The planets you go to look like this with the jungles, and you're exploring them. And there's weird animals and stuff. It's dope. It's if if you like this stuff, that's the type of game that, and you can set it on modes where it's super easy, and you can just enjoy that atmosphere and stuff. Oh, it's so good. By the way, we started watching. Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say we were talking about connective tissues and stuff. In 1977, there was a movie that came out called Star Wars. Look, I'm talking about George Lucas again. James Cameron saw it and quit being a truck driver to start making movies. Really? Mm-hmm. Worked out for him. Every, uh, you know, everything's connected to Star Wars. We started watching the Star Wars. Like in order. Do mm -hmm. you know how many lists there are out there? Of which way to do it? Or how it's in order? Oh yeah, I was and none of them match. Way. We just picked one. Good. Do what's right for you. We did, what? and it was awesome. Where Where are you at in the, in the watch? That's a great question. What's the last thing you can remember? Is it a spaceship? <laughs> <laughs> um there's a little green guy oh okay Ooh. well see that's what started it we watched the mandalorian oh it's so and good i was like i would really like to see all of it because i've ooh, grown up ooh, watching ooh. star wars but mm -hmm. i didn't follow it follow it seems as like he much was a star wars fan like he probably showed it was you actually my mom no way oh man oh yeah okay Interesting. Yeah. well they were so they were so big my dad uh, forced my mom to go watch Star Wars. My mom hates Star Wars now because my dad was just a guy in the 70s and of course he's going to go watch a nerdy movie. I'm like, yeah, it's a right. really good movie. She's like, ugh. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I really enjoyed it. Um, Especially I, all like the side stories and stuff mm -hmm. Oh man, that are in their world but doesn't necessarily <sighs> connect. Andor was so devastating. I love Andor. That is the best. Yeah, I agree. The best. My brother-in-law said, oh, man, you got to watch Andor. Yeah. So we get to it, and we're so excited. In the first two episodes, mm -hmm. we were like, this is the slowest, dumbest <laughs> Star <show>. Wars? <laughs> this is a Star Well, Wars? Andor. That one thing, yeah. yeah. We were like, oh, yeah, yeah. No. I was like, where is this going? We don't know what's going on. This is so slow. Nothing's happening. And then and or episode what? three to whatever. <laughs> After uh, episode two. Uh, oh, man. It's now our favorite. I'm mm -hmm. uh, I'm partial to I weirdly like Solo. That's the most hated Star Wars movie. And I think it's fun because I like space crime a lot. And I think a lot of people cared a lot. In that space movie. crime. I love space crime. Come on, let's heist something. Let's get on a spaceship and blow it up, man. I'm into it. Very specific. Oh, I love it. I'm in a I'm in a, RP, a TTRPG game. So like a D&D &D, that is Star Wars and we're doing lots of crime. It's incredible. <laughs> um. Oh, this thing. No, thank you. I do have a fear of large animals. Like, how do you come up with that? Like, were you tripping? Come up with what? The, yeah, I know. How do people come up with like monsters and stuff and things? Oh, it's so. I think epic. it's so cool. Yeah, I need mm -hmm. I need constraints so I know what to work within. I'm I'm not creative mm -hmm. enough to just have a, a, a no ceiling, you know. If you say just do what you want, I'm gonna be like, whoa, no. Oh no. Maybe it's a tiger. I don't know. It's too much. I have too much freedom. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's awful. But yeah, hippos, whales, elephants, the giant squid, they all scare me. Not crazy about buffalo. They're pushing it in size. I just don't like something that can kill me that easily. Oh, this thing looks fun. There's definitely um, some eldritch elements because I'm noticing like, um, well, I mean, it's, it's also a lot of them have like, f they almost like flowers. So a lot of them are can blend into their surroundings a lot. So it, it's kind of like the jungle. Everything's trying to kill you. But the multiple mm -hmm. eyes and things like that are reminiscent of like Lovecrafty and stuff. Um, um, Sam, what is it? What's the thing called? The demon dogs. The um, I don't uh, 
I can't remember that nerdy word right now. It's not a real word. I bet it is a real word, but <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Wow. Raccoon. Yours. Koala. Oh, koalas are fun. They're high all the time. Australians don't like them as much as we do because yeah, they're they're just they like don't. sick of them. They're like, oh, who gives a hell? Who gives a they're, damn? You know. They're slow. Mm -hmm. They sleep all the time. Mm -hmm. They only eat a lip. Eucalyptus. A lip. Eucalyptus. Linguistical. Eucalyptus. Anyways, they only eat those leaves. It's like a ukulele, but they leptus. get high from it. Mm -hmm. And they have mm -hmm. a smooth brain. Do no they? No ridges or lumps or valleys or bumps. Yes. So it's like they don't so remember like, anything. No. Oh, so wow. you can actually put no like their Yolo. food on a plate and uh -huh. hand it to them. And they're so dumb that they won't eat it. They only know Eucalyptus. to get it from the trees. <laughs> yeah. I can't say it. So I'm like, their food. I don't know. Do you hear that growl, that yell? That's a, that was part of the T-Rex noise from, that's the, that's a, I think. It's got some, some of, I wonder if he used the same animals because the T-Rex roar is like a bunch of animals together. I wonder if that's what Cameron did. I'm also trying to listen. I out. never. Oh, good. Sorry. I've never seen Jurassic Park. Oh, wow. I'll, well, I'll tell you what, if, uh. If you end up coming on for, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. Uh, if uh, for the next time that Jesse comes on, as long as everything works out well, um, and she's not like, I never want to do this again. We're definitely watching Almost Famous. We both like that movie we way do. too much to not do it. I'm so excited. It's like the Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I'd seen it before, but when Brandon said it, I was like, we have to do Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, dog. So um, we have to do Almost Famous, but I would totally watch. I don't know. I don't really want to do it where I'm forcing other people to watch movies they haven't seen. Yeah. Um, but Jurassic Park is awesome. It is well acted, and the the, the special effects hold up, and it's forty years old. Um, I think that's not right. That's not the right math. When was that? Ninety ninety four. So it's okay. Not forty. Yeah. So thirty. The thirty years old. Was I was I that old when I see it? Yeah, I got to see it in the drive-in at Piedmont the first time. It's a good viewing. Drive-ins. Do they even have drive-in movie theaters anymore? Not really. Like, do you have one around you? God, no, no. I, I low key. Uh, I don't know if it's low key, but I, I tell a lot of people about it. I, my retirement plan is to build a drive-in theater, and I live there, and I just maintain it. Um, uh, Chad says, "Yes, we do." I do. Where's the drive-in theater, Chad? Chad, tell me where the drive-in theater. I want to go. To I'm not going today. It's cold and there's snow, but <laughs> it's about forty-five minutes or so. Forty-five minutes. Ugh, it's so far. Uh, it's almost an hour by Monroe. Oh, 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 that's a good place for one. I was saying that what I want to do is I want to find a place that's outside of a big town that has a theater. But I, I want to make a drive in theater that also has like um, like a stage and we could like get bands to play or people do Q&A's. And then you don't have to use the old technology with radio frequencies. You could stream the audio to like something people put on their phones or whatever in their cars. You could do that at a drive in now. It's super low overhead. I just need the land and I would do it to where somebody could drive, like he said, about 45 minutes or so out of a big town. So locals can go there. People can come in if there's like a, if I do a movie festival, all kinds of stuff. I don't need a whole lot of money. Be fun. I love that idea. Yeah. Spend my days picking up trash and make it smell like popcorn. I will need an industrial ventilation. I can't live above a concession stand and smell like popcorn all the time. I can't do that. Uh -huh. But that's how they did it in cold water. They had that house right there when you pull in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And they the, lived on the property. That's right. That was a fun one. We saw, uh, we all saw um, Dark Knight there together. It's really good. I saw Titanic there. Whoa. Another James Cameron movie. Um, <laughs> you saw, oh, man, they played Titanic there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. My heart yeah. Chad says he needs to go. Yeah, we should go. He says ours does double features. Oh, no way. Okay, I'll Google it. I'll look at it. I'll write it down so I don't forget. I have to write everything down. I couldn't even remember the intro for the last two episodes. I think I'm going to rejigger the intro to this show until I get a live studio audience. Put that on park for a minute.
Now, did, I, did they go over? Did we miss? This is not... So the thing that he's moving around right now, do they not have more of them? Are you talking about the fire? Well, no, the because he's moving an avatar around. So like oh. he's, he's in a pod. Well, they've all been patrolling. getting attacked. They're still getting attacked. So I'm saying, I feel like he could go in and just be a little more cavalier. He's being very sneaky with his fake body. I'd be just killing it. I'd be ripping heads off stuff. That's what I'm going to get to my point of what I think. So when I remake this movie, it's going to be an R rated film. It's going to be, it's going to be what James Cameron should have done. Knowing the man that made Terminator two, the Navi are going to get even. Oh, this is, that's awful. Looks like a messed up hairless cat. Okay. Swear words. I like it when they make things glow. Uh, oh yeah. Like the, like their eyes or something or. No, like little bugs. Oh, stuff okay. In the forest. Yeah, they we, just showed them a minute ago. Yeah, I saw the the wispy little um, I don't know what those things are called the things that fly around and and during the springtime. But I know they got a big scene with even more of the the floaty glowies. How do you lay in a pod and just think of body movements and not? And <laughs> not do karate in your pot. That's why you strap down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, says, there's no way. Chad says, I'll not be seeing you again will be the new I'll be back in the remake. I like that. Oh, no. I like it. I'm into it. No, I think it's why it has the gel in the pod for the moving. So you can flex into the, oh, but he doesn't have okay. legs that work. So, hmm. That's true. Why does he know how that? I watched a video the that other day. That insensitive of me to ask. What, what was it? I didn't hear. How does he know how to move his legs? Because <laughs> everybody, because you just, have you ever heard of phantom leg syndrome? Or phantom limb? Yes. Okay, so he can still feel his legs in his head. The, the, your brain still tells, it still does it. Um, There was a guy, I just. The legs like, just don't answer back? Yeah, pretty much. Have you never laid on your arm until it fell asleep? <laughs> it's not like that, but it's kind of like that. I don't know. I moved the tail that it. I don't have all See, day look long. at her. Ooh. See how her face glows? You know what that is, though? It's the mask that the actors would wear that has the dots. Oh, the... So they wouldn't place the dots on them. They had them put on a mask. So the dots would stay in the same place every time all day. That's a genius idea. Instead of doing the paint for mocap. Mm -hmm. That's a special kind of skill being able to do mocap and VO stuff like that as much. Like a lot of the critical role people are always doing it. And it, that's a tricky thing. That's, I don't feel like everybody can do that. So. How can you not look at that and be like, I want to be there. I don't want to be in that forest. I that everything there wants to kill me. I know it's pretty, but so are the angler fish until you see them. You know, nature. <laughs> I would go to the basketball court. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I would need a Does guide. It glow? Yeah, no, probably not. It's a government basketball court. Probably not. I believe this is Zoe Saldana. I believe. I would not be going to have an answer to that. Uh, Chad confirms, yeah. Yeah, um, Guillermo on um, on the Jimmy Kimmel show asked Zoe Saldana, because you know, she did this movie. She was also in Star Trek where she... Oh, no, she didn't do... She wasn't uh, in a paint in Star Trek. She was in paint in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. So she's green in that and she's blue in this. And he goes, are you going to, he's like, when are you going to do purple? He just started like naming colors and stuff like that. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, Chad says Zoe. I haven't seen the second one. Second S avatar. Me neither. We'll, we will check it out. We'll peep it out. I want to. Mm. 
Be honest. It's because he's tall. Be honest. He's at least seven four. Oh my god. I would I would get in the pod and I would get my avatar to steal a ship and bring it back to Earth and then I would be a basketball star. I'd have so much money. I get so many nice clothes for my tall avatar while I play basketball with it. Uh, you don't want to be there. Come on, man. Even in the trees. <laughs> no, not in a tree. Jesse, that's unsafe. What if you fell into the beautiful abyss of nothing? Then you die a beautiful death. <laughs> No, it's very pretty. It is very, very cool. I do I do love a lot of good at atmospheric stuff, and I do tend to go for... I mean, with this, I tend to go for, like, blues and purples. Mostly because it shows up better on camera. Reds end up looking kind of orangey. You can't really... I mean, you can get pink pretty okay, but red's kind of harder to find. Green just doesn't work for me. I don't like green. I tried all green lights. I felt sick. I don't know what that's all about. I like because I'm not good with money. But blue and purple is kind of the range that I go for aesthetics when it comes to, like, a room or something like that. I tend to go earth tones like greens. Yeah, I can see that. This room doesn't count. I went out of my comfort zone. <laughs> you mean your fake background from Zoom? It looks so, it's so like pristine. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> it's so funny. Except for the treadmill. But that actually adds like a layer of like it is a picture like somebody put that in to make you think <laughs> it's real. You know what I mean? Like that's enough. When you do a magic trick, you, you have to leave it in there that some people kind of can figure out what it is. If it's too perfect, people don't believe anything that you're watching. So there's got to be a little bit of like sacrificial tells or uh, you show some of your crimes instead of hiding all of them. Oh, no. Is he getting eaten? You're by giving them? me way too much credit. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying that's why it's it's one of those things where my paranoia <laughs> kicks in and I'm like, it's so overt, it's covert, you know, I've like talked myself into it being a ploy. Yeah. My only worry is I don't want one of those things to try and fly up my nose. Bugs like they like to get up my nose. I don't know what's in my nose that they like, but I don't like it when they try and get up my nose. It tickles. Ooh, and those plants look like they have poison. Ooh, it looks like it would eat Not me. Not poison. Don't touch it. Oh, don't play the it's, bongos with it. It's delicious nectar. Ooh. Oh, so this is their... I, um, I so, want to touch something that glows like that. <laughs> I'll keep my eyes out. No, bolos, no. Oh, no. See? See, that's what you get for running on a tree, man. But you know what? If a man saved him, he wouldn't be running after this man in the woods. T talking about teach me your ways. <laughs> That's funny. Like, what if Pocahontas was a dude? Let's talk about this for a second. That's interesting. Although, is that what I add in my uh, remake of Avatar? Oh, papyrus. Ah. <laughs> uh. I have learned a new term for this type of character, this gentleman right here. Like right now, this scene on this this TV looks not as great. If this was like a nice, good, like 4K, like high res or like even on a computer monitor, this scene would look better because of the motion blur they've done with it. But this type of character I learned, I don't know if it's the term or if somebody else coined it, but proto villain. So it's like this is your first villain before you fight the big villain, even though he doesn't really switch sides. It's just like the next level the hero's got to get through. Okay. And then in the end, the enemy of my enemy, so your proto-villain becomes your friend. Whole thing's derivative. <laughs> it's like the most creative thing anybody's ever made, and everybody goes, ah, oh, it's fur gully, assholes like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. God, movie mm -hmm. reviewers. What's so funny is I hate movie critics now with a pat. Part of the reason I'm doing this is because I got so mad at movie reviewers. And then you're telling me that back. I'm like, oh, oh that Trent. I remember. Oh, good. That one. It stuck. I don't remember a lot. But yeah, that made an impact on my life. In Avatar, <laughs> but I remember you shitting up. Okay. <laughs> Also, like, they just put him in a T-shirt. 
It couldn't even have been a cool graphic. No team. logo, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Couldn't have been like I'm with stupid or something. <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm with loser. Yeah, Remember yeah. the shirt? What was it? You that had it? it? Was like I'm with stupid, and it was an arrow pointing <laughs> up. I didn't have it, but I, I've seen that one. It's genius. It sounds like something I would have. I'm always on the cutting edge of comedy. It'll be funny one day. Just wait. Just keep I, waiting. Like, I feel like there's a picture out there. Like oh. I can see it in my brain. Oh, no. I didn't have a shirt like that. Mostly because they don't make shirts like that in my size. Real limited. Like this scene with the way they're doing these more static shots looks phenomenal. So like... Mm -hmm. You forget, you forget you're watching to, like this right here with the, the lighting effects from the fire and stuff. <laughs> Listen here, I've been in the friend zone with this girl for six and a half years and I haven't been sitting in the friend zone just so you can show <laughs> up with your fake avatar and steal the woman, okay? I've known her my whole life and I've been waiting for the day we're going to hook up and how dare you come in here and try and plug your hair into her tail or however they do it. Spoilers. I hope at least one person goes, you know what? I will try Avatar now that Trent and Jesse are talking over. I, I hope we've spread that. You know, we've paid that forward with what we've done here. We really need like an Avatar movement. <laughs> I don't know if it needs that. It is the highest grossing film of all time. It's made James Cameron an extremely wealthy man and an authority figure on special effects. And it helped, you know, push forward other movies because this movie did so well. Other lesser movies were able to do. OK, I don't know if we need a campaign, but. Maybe a shadow campaign. We recruit like a cult. Ooh, let's start a cult. A lot of money in starting a cult. You make you make more money as a leader. But you have more fun as a follower. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on the leader. <laughs> Some of them, yes. That's what Creed said in the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So now I can see the, okay. I was going to say I can see the context, but with him, there's never context. That's what's so perfect about it. Never. <laughs> never. I like that. But like some people are such... Harry Potter fans, Lord of the Rings fans, mm -hmm. Star Trek, Star Wars, list goes on and on and on. Fast and Furious. But you don't hear anybody being like, Avatar is my thing. And you know, this is a little crass, but I do know that they've made Navi sex toys. There's tons of them. Like they just show up all the, over the place. Like you, you just see them when you're, I don't know, they just, people make fun of them and stuff. But like they, people knew that there would be enough people to sell them to make them. I don't understand. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. You know what I think it is? I think it's I think this is raw creativity. I think what he did was he pulled back the curtains on his brain. And that's that's what happens. That's what you know, like the beginning of these shows when I'm trying to say all that dumb shit that I mess up every time. That's I get embarrassed because it's me trying to say the things that I want to do. If I was to write those on my own, I would be so nervous to say it out loud. I would do it because I'm a yutz and I like attention and I need validation. But this kind of thing right here is him showing what's inside of him. This was what was in his head and he put it out there. And anytime you do that, anytime you're vulnerable, there is somebody somewhere that will make fun of you if they hear it. Now, if you keep your circle small, like in, say, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, you can really let yourself go creatively. And then your friends that are your real friends will push you forward and let you sail. But then you show a stranger that and you're like, this is weird. What are we watching right now? They're seven foot tall and blue and they're barely wearing clothes. Is this about to turn into a weird version of the Matrix? Like people are going to make fun of it because it's so creative. And I think that's why. I think that's why people want to make fun of it. That's my pitch. I agree. I do. And it's hard. It's hard to be vulnerable like yeah. that and say, hey, I got this really cool idea. Yeah. Especially when he had these ideas, but we didn't have the technology for it. Yeah. And he spends four years working on a movie. Let me tell you, I would be bored of whatever project I'm working on for four years. I don't care what it is. <sighs> That's a good I would be point. over it. Like, how do people have so much passion for one project to keep it going and not only keep themselves motivated, mm -hmm. but the crew, the actors? I mean, could you imagine signing up for a film for four years? The same film? 
so like so like yeah th- i'm i'm really am trying to think on it like imagine like christmas 2 that you're still working on avatar you know like all right we're gonna take a break from whatever we're working on at this point previs or writing or whatever and like we're gonna take a christmas break with our family like you still working on that avatar yeah still working on it and then, and then that's only halfway that is a long time i i mean you know i've been i was podcasting since we started in 07 um and i didn't really i didn't like it's not that i lost my passion for it i lost my passion for the way we were doing it um but that's only been within the last few years um the first say 10 or so i was addicted to it it was like my favorite thing in the world um so and i also wasn't doing that every day that was like once a week for a little while during the year yeah i'd I'd slit my wrist so just so i didn't have to see blue anymore (laughs) Get me out of Avatar. Right? I think it's so great. I love Jeremiah Rabisi. You ever seen Boiler Room? It's so good in Boiler Room. It's about a scam artist's office. Mm-hmm. It's got Vin Diesel in it. No, I don't, I don't he, think so. He just got accused of bad things. It's got other people in it. I too. can't see him anything other than just a big old nerd. Jeremiah Rabisi? And like sleazy. Like greasy. Yeah, I mean, he he came on the scene, um, like um, in Friends. He was Phoebe's uh, younger brother, is where he was like one of his first big roles. But I feel like I didn't reckon, I didn't notice him until he had his baby. Yeah. Oh, Babies. that's right. Oh my god, I forgot all about that. He had her brother's babies. Yes. Yeah. When she said she's pregnant, he goes, "Yes." <laughs> Well, I noticed him first in Gone in 60 Seconds, where I was like, I should pay attention to this guy. He's Kit, the, Kip, the younger brother that kicks off all the bad stuff. Um, and a lot of people recommend Sneaky Pete. I tried a little bit of it. I wasn't into it. I might try it again. We'll see. I watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, you mean like start a internal war with the natives? Nah. We're good. I'm just going to go have sex with one on. Bye. Yeah. I love the faux hawk uh, unicorns, too. I'm into I'm into that. Whoa. It's I just noticed it has like six legs. That's so efficient. And it breathes from his throat. That's I was Markiplier talked about this when he said when he redesigns the human body, you need to have a nose here. So that way, when you're running, when you need more air, it's coming into you and you need like four nostrils. This is not enough nostrils to get air in here. One of the first things you do to a car to make it go faster is let it breathe better genius so all my snot can just oh sure from here and then if you're wearing a shirt you already have a mask on it's genius when when (laughs) so when i redesign humans i'm going to steal his idea and i'm going to give us a kangaroo skin why well it's the toughest leather and they have you ever seen a jacked kangaroo I've seen that guy punch a kangaroo because the kangaroo <laughs> kidnapped his dog. The, kangaroo, he, the guy punches him and the kangaroo goes, <laughs> <laughs> like me, bro. It's you the greatest. It's so funny. They're such dicks. They, uh, but they but their their skin shows off muscles. And I feel like as a human, if we have to have a skin, because our skin is the worst skin on the face of the planet. We can't even get it to look the same on our own body. It's the weakest. It doesn't hold up to most of its environment. We need external stuff. Kangaroos, though, they got a little bit of fur. kind of looks like a human. If we've got to have skin that's more like animal skin, I think that's the one that's the closest. And it's the toughest. I want tensile strength in my arms, man. Can we keep the pocket? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I okay. have a little friend hang out with me. Are you kidding? They'd be like, hey, like your skin. I'll be like, it has pockets. <laughs> I keep my AirPods in here, and here's my phone charger, and here's my book I'm reading, and here's a snack. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, let's talk about snack time. Did you bring any snacks? I did not. Okay. But I have drink. I'm a drink girly, so I have water. Very nice. You should always have water. I have my protein water. Okay. Protein water. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Diet Coke, I get it. It's called protein 2. Po- yeah. Protein 2O instead of H2O. Okay. <laughs> Is it, t- what do they do? Put a bunch of eggs in it? What makes it protein? Water? I guess like just. I don't know. It's, it's whey protein isolate, uh, but okay. it's not thick like a protein shake. 
It literally just tastes yeah. like a Gatorade or something. But you're getting yolk. And then a Diet Coke. Diet Coke's very mm -hmm. nice. I have my yerba mate in a nice cup, but I grabbed gingerbread cookies because I watched nice. Gingerbread Man a few weeks ago, and I've been obsessed with gingerbread ever since then. I I didn't mean for it to. Right like, after the Christmas season. Yeah, but these are all year long ones, so I got lucky on that. That's what they say. They could be old. Nobody buys these. So. I miss I miss my Christmas tree cakes already. I had plenty. I had a bunch. I probably, I, well, I had I, at least a box plus two, I think. A box plus two? Now, was it a, the box with the little ones or all was big. it the big box? All big. Oh, I'm all big or all nothing. I see that little one. Get that out of here. What am I, an ant? Sheesh. That's just enough to piss me off. Uh, yeah, I'm getting started. That's my appetizer, man. Mm hmm. Weirdly aggro about our Christmas tree cakes. The flux vortex. and not the chocolate ones. No, yeah, they're fine, but it's like, eh, I'll eat nothing. I mean, when you eat the start uh, Christmas tree cakes, you're basically <laughs> eating nothing. So why not be all or nothing? I almost got some Fig Newtons. I know I'm 87. No, I, I'll grab. But I've they sounded before, yeah. so good. Some I talk about this a lot. Sometimes you crave the not best thing. Like for a long time, I smoked basic cigarettes. It's because I kind of wanted a trashy cigarette. I don't know how to explain it. I knew they weren't the best. I, I it's what I wanted. Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's funny. Nobody else does. <laughs> I like this. I like the floating like islands a lot. It's like uh, it's very uh, Zelda ripped that off for Tears of the Kingdom. So what came first? This avatar? Okay, wrong, first of all. <laughs> but this avatar? <laughs> yeah, or... Or the Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender was, a, was okay. a show a long time before this. When it was coming out, we all thought, wait, like The Last Airbender? And they were like, no. But I believe the big movies of Last Airbender did come out after this. So, okay. look, no offense to Aren't Last Airbender. Aren't they Air making... What's that? Aren't they making um, a new movie? For last airbender, like Avatar, the last. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, probably. I hope that they sh hopefully they'll make more because they, you know, they had that show for so long. It's got a huge following. Um, I haven't watched it. I'm not interested in watching it. I'm look. There's some things I got to hit the floor. I'm probably gonna skip that one, but I respect it because its fandom's really good. Like the, a lot of people really go in for it. If you like anime and stuff like that, so. I watched it. Oh, you did. You liked in it in your face. Did you like mm -hmm. it? Okay. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Which really is better, good. this avatar or that avatar? Oh, rude. <laughs> I didn't expect that answer. <laughs> I'm going to have choose. to say Avatar Last Airbender. Okay. I'm I think a lot of people agree. Because it. it's got so much heart. And if you like the the source material, I heard it. All their stuff has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it has Appa. Like the band Appa? No, A P P A. Oh, that might be how you spell it. I don't know, but it's the big fluffy guy that they ride on in the air, and he goes, "Oh and, yeah," um, and they go, "Yep, yep." <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this fucking thing. No, thank you. It's got a goatee. No, yeah. Never trust anybody with a goatee. It's true. They're evil. They'll break your heart. <laughs> Goatee men are scoundrels. I always think about um, Ben Affleck and um, and Mallrats when I think about like goatees and a Van Dyke because he was he had that. He's never had that in another movie, and he's probably the worst person he could be in that movie. And so I associate the Van Dyke <laughs> with that. So sorry for people that do it, but then again, Walter White also had one too. So I'm just saying, there's a little little bit of a precedence. Chad says, uh, "Clever girl, but with wings." Oh, it is clever girl she hasn't seen that yet chad that's a jurassic park reference one of the dinosaurs is a very clever girl well technically they all are 
right? Would, would you do that? Would you ride something oh, like no. that? God, no. No, no, no. I have no want to do that uh, for a lot of reasons. Let's start with the fact that most of the moving body is between her legs. I don't ride motorcycles or anything with an engine under my crotch. I don't like it. I ride. I drive cars that are low <laughs> to the ground because I flip over in vehicles that I'm in that sometimes I'm not driving. So, no, I'm not going to get on a hang gliding monster that also probably wants to eat me. Would you get on that thing? You're in, You're a mad person. You're insane. You're a daredevil. I like to ride things that want to eat me. <laughs> I'm going to get that sound bite and send it to you later. Um, no, I totally would, though. We went um, zip lining. Oh, yeah. In Honduras. Okay. Oh, yeah. You would totally hop on one of these things, especially if, like, her, she's used to doing that. So it's not. Yeah. You, she knows how he's going to move and stuff like that. So. Like I would do that, but I would not ride a roller coaster. We all have our thing. You know? Really? See, mm -hmm. I like roller coasters because they I go don't do fast. It. That's where I get mm -hmm. my stupidity in. I love going insanely quick, but on the ground because <laughs> I fall over a lot. It happens. Jesus, that I just noticed that. Okay, so they're rocking longbows that are taller, which that's a regular longbow would be taller than a human but scaling up the arrow that's like a six foot arrow that they're shooting that's like a that's like a broom handles coming flying through the air and stabbing into you i didn't I know even think about that does he tell <laughs> we're watching vikings right now <laughs> oh that show <laughs> that's a good one yeah never heard of it never heard of it uh, gallivanting is that what they call I don't remember the rest of that line but um, you liking it you like Vikings oh yeah yeah but it's it's one of those shows that should have ended oh, like a few seasons ago going. yeah mm -hmm. but anyways I was thinking about the bows bow and arrows mm -hmm. and I'm like can y'all just get like a gun or something what are y'all doing <laughs> why are we why? you're making metal yeah what are you doing why are we why can't we be civilized about this why has it got to be so archaic you're, <laughs> you're not gone. legolas <laughs> with an unlimited supply of yeah. magic arrows like where are you keeping these things fletching looks like it sucks like having to split the feather first getting the feathers and splitting the feathers and then making the damn arrow and then and then you make a whole bunch of them and you give them to your your men or your, your fighters and they just shoot them all away. I'd be like, go pick them up, man. And they're like, whoops. All the arrows come flying. It's just one of those reminders that like I was born in the right time. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't want to have to get dinner with five arrows. Um, I like my Diet Coke and my antidepressants <laughs> and I don't want to make an arrow. <laughs> Jesse for president. <laughs> um, hey, women I, can't be president. Papyrus. Um, Too emotional. <laughs> the talk over is heresy. Um, <laughs> God, she's just chain smoking this. Okay, so I, I, um, yeah, uh, okay. In Dungeons and Dragons, you're supposed to keep up with how many arrows you have, and do you know how many people actually keep up with how many arrows they have? No, nobody. In oh, fact. I like yeah usually it's like you got like 25 of them and you're like i'm not gonna and the one person that coined the best term to explain why a lot of people don't do it is travis mcelroy not travis um not justin <laughs> the youngest one the littlest one that ran uh the their last uh, ran the adventure zone um he said i'm not gonna make you go to the arrow store and i'm like yes that's what we need <laughs> expedition let's Griffin, thank you, Chad. I knew you were gonna come in with that. <laughs> I, can't believe I forgot Griffin's name, the littlest of the McElroys. Oh, and it's like a butterfly wing fletching too. Oh, and it's like a carrot for the uh, for the, <laughs> the arrowhead. I want to propagate that. Propagate that. Okay, Zoe. It's the politically correct way to say stealing plants. 
Oh, you want to get a clipping? Start your own. Then you can have little water, little water bottle plants. That are purple. Oh, so <laughs> oh, this thing. Oh, no. That's your cows slash deer. Looks awful. Oh, look at that thing in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not walking anywhere near or that one. Look at these things that they're standing next to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throw it over your shoulder and get get out of there. Those plants are going to eat you. I know I've seen this before, but I don't remember the minutia of it. It's been a while since I've seen this. But that plant's definitely going to eat something. You can't tell me it's not. They just talked about the circle of life. It didn't eat anybody. That's a Chekhov's man-eating plant, James Cameron. What are we doing here? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is see, I like this. This is like Shadow of Colossus, like the green and the, the floaty islands. This is fantasy at its most, man. This has elements of almost any type of fantasy you you could want all wrapped into one, but it, it has to fall into the moniker of sci-fi. But this is an adventure. This is um you know, it's uh we we're talking about Lord of the Rings, but it's anything with, you know, monsters and heroes and well, just Ooh, like the sky, like there were several moons earlier, like yeah. in Star Wars and stuff on the different planets. Double moons, I'm slipping boo milk. Do you ever watch bad lip reading on YouTube? I used to. The, I have seen a bunch. The Star Wars ones are the best. Um, the, I've, I've never seen Star Wars ones. I'll send you a link to Bushes of Love. It's the best song okay. I've ever done. I like to watch all the football ones. Oh, they're so good. Oh, I think the last one he did was a football one. Um, those I like. Twilight's pretty good. Walking Dead, Carl Papa. That's a that's a banger right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. See that I would not do. I think I could. I I don't think I could do that now. I did just start a new quasi workout routine this week. I'm not excited about it, but I'm trying to get my build my arms back up. Give me like a couple of months. I think I could do that. Honestly, that's fine. It's just a rope, man. It's only me that can screw it up. My intrusive thoughts would win. I'd be like, <laughs> jump. This is really far. Like, <laughs> there it goes. I'll be holding on. It's like, what if I just, you know, like just for a second. What's going to happen? Chad says, uh, you think the plant has poison ivy slash oak? <laughs> my brain's itchy because my avatar got into poison ivy. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm not allergic to poison ivy. When I was a kid, I was playing with it. My parents were like, get out of there. And I was like, why? And they're like, it's poison ivy. I'm like, so? And they're like, it's going to give you rashes. I'm like, okay. And it didn't. I'm a god. That's how that works. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if the real poison ivy it starts knocking off banks... I'm everyone's Batman. Okay. I will definitely let the police know. I also don't tell the police. They don't, they, you can't Jesse. This is okay. So Batman can't tell all the people around that he's Bruce Wayne. Oh. Otherwise they'll he'll kill his friends. And he's like, I don't have any friends. And like, well, a lot of people seem to like you, Batman. You got this James Gordon. Well, he's not my friend. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll kill him then. No, don't kill him. I like James Gordon. See, you can't tell the police. They're the last ones that need to know that I'm Batman. Okay, so it's just like the real world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, please don't tell the real police I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my nightmare. You know what? I also don't like it's a lot of it with them is the wings. I don't birds freak me out. They move in ways that I can't predict. And they're basically dinosaurs. I'm not a fan of birds because I feel like like I remember when I was down one of the last times to see you guys, I went down to the pier and there was uh, like a, a, a pelican. Man, that's a grody looking bird when you get up close to it. And it was just kind of pelican around. It was big and I got close and I was like, this thing could just eat me if it wanted to. I don't like that. Or the occasional heron. I like birds. Oh, you also you, the, the type of person that would hop on a thing like that and fly would be cool with birds because they're they're scary creatures. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> Makes sense. I feel like the only thing if you want it, if you one day you're like, I want to be more extreme, it would be like a tiger. Oh, 
Oh, you're gonna. I love that he's trying to like wrangle these things because that's my beige flag is that I think I can go up to any wild animal and they will just feel my good vibes and become domesticated. And that's what he's trying to do right now. Like, hey, man, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to ride you. Jesse, we. And I feel like I could do that. I I feel like I could do that. I absolutely think that you have a calming enough spirit. I like this was like six months ago a brown bear got like loose in the city like a big bear was in in madison and i was on bear watch i was like where's the bear today and people would see it in different neighborhoods and i got to thinking what if i walk down to my parking lot and the bear's there and what would i do i think as long as i'm not in its home i didn't startle it it's not around its cubs and i don't have food i think i could walk up to a grizzly bear and pet it i absolutely think i could now when you read the story man madison man mangled by bear you'll know that i did that willingly (laughs) that i went down doing the one thing Uh. i wanted to do no i really i really do feel that way and every time an animal Mm -hmm. doesn't like me right off the bat it's It's the end of my world (laughs) yes erica's cats i am determined to become best friends with posty (laughs) okay he lets me pet him now oh really i'm not allowed to move yeah like if i walk towards him he's like no but he'll come to me Mm -hmm. and i'll just kind of put my hand out there Mm -hmm. this is like a five-year working thing i'm trying to become best friends with this freaking cat that I'm allergic to that I shouldn't even be petting. I forgot you were allergic to him too. That's funny. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never even been near Posty. Um, what's the one that always like hangs out a lot? Cast uh, Castillo? Castillo? Cass. Cass, mm-hmm. yeah. Cass Castiel. is a homie. Cass will hang out with you and sleep on you and stuff. And then there's a third cat. No. So the black one That's is Kylo. Kylo. That's Cheryl. That's right? Cheryl's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Kylo. Kylo's cool. Yes. Just avoid cat. I want a cat so freaking bad. Get a hairless one. You'd be like a villain. Uh, <laughs> oh, we found an animal you won't wrangle. I don't, <laughs> you don't, I don't like know. I don't like know if I can do it. I don't know if I can have a slime ball. Like, They're not slimy. They're rub like, up on my leg and like skin. call me. It's... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't get one either. I do. I want to. Um, I think I want my. Ne- I want an animal when I get my next place. I think I want it to be a yellow cat. But I do also want a big dog. So I'm gonna wait and see how um this air quotes working out thing that I'm doing is. We'll see how long that lasts. But if I can keep mm-hmm. up with it, I want to use what weight I have to like to bulk up with like lifting strength. And then as I'm working into it, I'll move into stuff that's more cardio so I can drop some of the weight. And so if I can get to the point where I'm doing a walk or a run or a jog or just some kind of movement every day, I'd love to have a big dog. Would settle for a corgi, though. They're pretty funny. You should get a puppy and a cat at the same time. Oh, then they'll be best. And they'll, watch be them, bounds. they'll be homer bounds. They'll be homer bounds. And watch them grow up together and be besties. That's a good idea, actually. Oh. Um, you, I mean, the puppy stage, I've never had a cat mm-hmm. puppy stage is the worst. If you can get past that, I mean, they're oh, cute. Had, so I, I, yeah, I, I kind of know we've had, we've always had animals when I was younger. I've just, uh, well, <laughs> the last house I was living in, um, when I was in Alabama was inhospitable for me. So I definitely wasn't going to put an animal in there. The place that we moved in up here, uh, Nate had two cats. He had, uh, Stella and Scotch and they were great. They were awesome cats. Um, and when they, they passed away, they were brother and sister. And then he got, uh, Lizzie who came all the way from Texas. Um, we had this cat in theory for like two weeks. It, we didn't see it because this family had this cat and they got a dog and the cat and the, and of course the cat didn't like a new dog coming into its place. So they got rid of the cat. I don't understand these people. So it rode in a car from Texas to Wisconsin. Of course we didn't see this thing for two weeks. I've lost probably a quart of blood to this cat when we did finally start getting around it. And what I did was I sat down in the living room one day and I used one of those feathers on a stick 
And I just sat down on the floor because I knew it was hiding behind the couch. I was sat on the floor and I didn't look over there. I just started flapping it on the floor. I just ignored the cat while I was playing with this toy. And it was probably like 20 minutes later, it came out and started going for it. And I was like, hello there. <laughs> You're in my home. I noticed food was missing and poop was in the box. But uh, <laughs> this is how we're going to play this now. And that uh, she's now, Nate is such a good cat dad because he's he's living in a different place. And she now comes out and is social and she'll she'll rub up against you. She'll bite you if you pet a little too much. But she's yeah. she is a, much closer to a normal sweet cat now. Thanks to Nate. Um, hey, Brand's here. I love that. Love that the cat camo is still, still not a fan of Avatar. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. It's great. What's wrong with, tell me what you don't like about it. Is it too blue? Daba dee daba dee. I didn't have an Eiffel has 65. Has he even for, watched okay. it? I don't think he has. I don't bet. I feel like Brandon hasn't watched this. I'm going to wager a bet. He hasn't. Death from above. A braid the fern gully joke, Jay. It's like we planned it. <laughs> Brandon says he has. Okay, all right. Fair enough. If you've seen it, you don't like it. Cool, cool, cool. I think it's fun, man. I'm into just the... Oh, no, I like this red one with that crazy, like, chin and head uh, mohawk. A lot of mohawks. In it. You know, it was 2009. I had a faux hawk at the time, too, so... Those were in. Yeah, makes sense. But and the fire you remember the fire on the cars <laughs> fire on the cars like the fake fire flames oh yeah that everybody mean, was so cool back then in, in 2009 i mean they've been doing flames since like the 50s like old rat rides and stuff like that and ghost flames those got really big in yeah. the like early 2000s i always want ghost flames in my car i think they're really cool looking they're just kind of dated but <laughs> oh the chrome flames too um Let's see, Brand says CG is cool. Story is repeated. Um, and Zoe Saldana is fire. Yes, she. I love Zoe Saldana. You missed her drinking from the plants <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Jesse's purple plants. It was. Mm, it was good. Look at this fucking thing. Hey, this is kind of like the big creature that's in the Mandalorian. It's in the water. Spoiler alert. I don't remember what the thing's called. Uh, hey, Aiden's here. Oh my god, are y'all watching Fern go? <laughs> <laughs> thank you aiden thank you brandon i appreciate that <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit better i'm sorry jesse i should have known all right taku machu okay And then I Brandon like how says, Fix she my just face turns again. him into a. Yeah, he better be talking about your face. <laughs> I can't fix my. If I could fix my face, I would. Do you think I wouldn't? Uh, and Brandon says, This is why we can't watch nice things. You're right. We're a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> oh, man. He's I like how she just turns this military man into a hippie. Yeah, it's true. Uh,. It makes a lot of sense. It's like, uh, you know, people in uh, Nam, um, sort of like making more of a life there than probably a military should. Also, he looks like everybody that just started playing World of Warcraft for the first time. I lost two weeks of that game. Um, Brent says this movie needs more fortunate stone or fortunate son. Do you mean or fortunate stone? Cause I agree. Fortunate son. It is very nammy, especially towards the end, which is my, my favorite. I like the like, stone. It's like, yeah, I, uh, I found them all made to raise a flag. Ooh, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. What you gonna do with that chair, man? Oh, oh, you were in a wrap. He got hurt in the basketball court. <laughs> oh, I can't believe he's the don't breathe guy. 
So Aiden calls Brandon a nice one, Gramps, but Brandon says, only acceptable song to play when a soldier goes all hippie or changes species. Totally agree. And helicopter scenes. Sometimes uh-huh. you can get away with Along the Watch. Is Along the Watchtower the uh, Hendrix song? Um, it's They play it in a bunch of Vietnam movies, so it's like synonymous with it now. I can't, not that, but Fortunate Son, absolutely. Is this where he confesses his love of the plants and the earth? Oh, not earth. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is what I also think about. And this is kind of crass. I'm very sorry for bringing this fantasy, this lovely fantasy movie down to this dumb level. But <laughs> it does make me think that the other people that don't get into avatars that see him falling for the Pocahontas... Is pro- I feel like they're like, he's hooking up with him, isn't he? He's de- he's de- like, they are all definitely a- making lots of rumors oh, for about sure. it. It's a sex thing, right? Like, I feel like that's absolutely they're all that he's eating lunch alone now. You know what I mean? Oh, plant. They're goodies. just mad he's getting some. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're like, I got to settle for my roommate. Bad uh, over here. <laughs> he's actually getting some. <laughs> Uh, if Chad says Hendrix cover, OG was Dylan. Did not know that. Thank you. Thank you. Hippie Dippy Baloney uh, from Brand- from Aiden. I don't know what Hippie Dippy Baloney is, but I'd like some. Is it all natural? No preserve? Then it's not Baloney. That's true. Do you find Baloney out in the wild? What is Baloney? Uh, all the meat that doesn't make it into other meat squished together and then shit out in a sheet or in a tube. So why don't they taste as good <sighs> as hot dogs? Oh, I don't. Well, I, I kind of like them the same. I'm about the same on a hot a hot dog as I am. A, well, no, hot dogs are. I don't know the casing, maybe seasonings. Um, Brandon says, "Dude gets to walk in and have a 12 inch blue meat zuka." I'd swap also. Also gross meat zuka. As I was getting close to that word, I was like, "Am I going to be able to read this when I got there?" I was like, "Ah, okay, that's what he wrote." Oh, but they had a moment. They're starting to accept him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which they shouldn't. Because they, the man always turns. Now, this is, I like this. Oh, it's like Weeping Willows. I do like this a lot. I would reach out and touch one of these. These plants I'm okay with, even though they do look just as dangerous. Like squid Don't trees. you just want to wrap yourself in them? I, I no. I would touch one first and then let's talk. I am not gonna go full hog into something that could give me space aids. Um, Aiden says, uh, Trent, next talk talk over the Lego Movie, Hippy Dippy Baloney. Oh man, I love the Lego Movie. That's a that's a uh, baller movie. Brand says, this is how smallpox blanket starts. True. And Chaz says, uh, that's all phosphorus. Oh no. <laughs> See. <laughs> Care. I'm hills are alive, <laughs> whirling around in that shit right now. Fair enough. Well, do you ever have you ever caught like you've caught fireflies, right? Like when you're a kid. I thought you were gonna ask me if I had caught smallpox. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's for later. Did you? Uh, you don't do. You don't start with smallpox. You got to work your way up to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you caught you caught fireflies when you're a kid, right? Oh, yeah. I love doing that. Mason jar. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't really see fireflies anymore. Well, I don't hear for certain. We just don't have a lot of bugs here. Like for like six, nice. like, like for maybe like three or four weeks, we have wasps. That's the only bugs I see here. And I don't see the wasp anywhere but my porch where I'm trying to get a smoke in. <sighs> okay, no wasps. mosquitoes? Uh, near the water, um, like if you're over near like Marquette and stuff over on the east side, there's a lot of parks that are next to the Lake uh, Monona. So you get a lot of like that, that happens at lakes anyways. You'll get kind of on some days you'll get skeetery. Um, but but they they get so confused because the like temperature because it'll it'll draw out like how you know how it is there when like it might get warm all of a sudden and they wake up and they're all freaking out and it gets cold again. Like that'll happen a lot more up here. So they they tend to sort of take their time with that. But. I mean, the upside is. Wait, what's that? They're kitten. Well, okay. <laughs> Aiden, cover your eyes. Um, 
which Aiden says bliss for like 30 seconds. Brand says the hills are like, yep, like with the cancerous glowing. That's yeah. exactly correct. <laughs> You're alive with your irradiated higher levels. Whoa, for life? Hold up, ma'am. This was a temporary. Whoa, hold up. I I got to go. <laughs> she said we're mated for life. I would be like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted uh, stage five clinger. Yeah. Uh... Oh, but he's fallen in love. Look at him. He just had VR sex. He's in love. <laughs> it is VR sex, actually. <laughs> I here's the question though. We're sitting here putting ourselves in in his place. What if you're in her place? She knows that's a human that's controlling that, right? They're not lying to them right now. No, she knows. Okay. So all of a sudden a human walks up to you and they happen to be, uh, you know, attractive in the way that you find attractive and you're single and you're, you, you get along and you're running on tree limbs together and you're like, look at this glowing thing. And he's like, cool glowing thing. I would still, I don't know about it being a person in a, I would be like, can I go to your base and we can have dinner? <laughs> like I would feel so weird not talking to the real I don't think I could separate knowing that it's uh, like a, a different like I'm OK with, with being interested in him as a person, but I would legitimately be like, hey, why don't I come grab you? I can push your wheelchair through the woods and shit, man. We'll have a good day. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Smash. You smash. <laughs> OK, fair <laughs> enough. Oh, man. Brandon says can't do just the tip as a novice. It's very, very true. Chat says paradise by Fendora's light. OK, boys. Um First time chat, Jax is the man man. Fern Gully win. He came in. He knocked it out of the park. Thank There's you, a conspiracy. They're over there, like cackling, laughing like Aunt idiots. Jay's on the video. <laughs> Let's go make fun of her. Uh, Aiden says, uh, how bummed would you be to give someone the ability to walk and they walk away forever? <laughs> 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 oh man, bro, this is a run. That that'd be showing off rejection. Absolutely. Oh man. Oh, that's good. <laughs> this, is, but this scene is very fern gully. I will give you that. <laughs> <laughs> the bulldogs are coming in. You know what it makes me think of? Weirdly, anything like this. I was like not scarred, scarred in a good way. Let's call it. I was tattooed by um. That uh, uh uh God rescuers down under, I think that is like one of the most insane animated cartoons ever because there's those big machines that are destroying things and you got the uh the egg eating creatures the the lizards and stuff that was like ooh visceral. And just a heads up, we got. I forgot about that movie. Yeah, it's a it's a solo banger, man. It's uh it's been a long time, but we got about two minutes before we're gonna take our little break here. Just a heads up, Brandon agrees. Rescuers is amazing. Um, yeah, Down Under is uh Komodos, Komodo dragons. Yeah, they were always trying to eat the eggs, man. He's going rogue. Yeah, this feels very um. <laughs> the worst. What's that? Humans are the worst. I don't. Yeah, I don't really care for them much. That's Look why what I, we're doing. That's why I like movies. It's not real people. This I like. That's what I'd be doing if I had a seven foot body and arms 14 feet long. You want to call us savages? I'll fucking show you savage. Yes. Classy. Yeah. Ratchet. I'm into it. I, I'm telling you, man, the Navi win very early. And I think the Navi are going to like imprison the humans. I'm in. I'm so into them getting, you know, payback and stuff. Um, Jax is the man man says, why are the Komodos being mean? <laughs> Brendan says just Komodo things. He says true. <laughs> I love that making fun of Avatar brought the whole almost the whole family onto the this is wonderful. Only at the talk over I bet we can. The the hatred mm -hmm. can bring us together. <laughs> Chad says, "Why is Lang mad? He's deep cover." Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't understand why sometimes they speak their language and then sometimes they speak English. Oh, uh, like people that speak uh, Spanglish. You know, they'll um, switch back and forth mid conversation. Just when you're multilingual, you 
you end up just kind of saying whatever makes the most sense because when you translate things it's not exactly the same thing that's why it sounds kind of weird when we do translate because it's you have to understand how they understand the intentions of certain things um but we are we do that all the time hasta la visa like that's that's that uh we tell somebody adios like we're just it's kind of how you do it okay that's fair um let's see Jack says, I don't like the Avatar guys that are blue. They're sad. Moran says, I think the Navi should uh, drive their butterfly lizards to Earth and womp human booty. I agree a thousand percent. And we're going to stop this movie. We're going to stop it in three, two, one. Yeah. All right. We're at 130.04 is where we're going to actually take a little bit of a break. We're gonna, I'm going to set up the five-minute timer for the five Ps. Uh, personal time, PPs, and poo-poos. It's, it's, not, it's longer than five minutes, so don't rush back. Don't hurt yourself. We'll come back and talk for a minute. Go get you some snacks. Get some more protein water. We'll see you guys in just a second. <sighs>
And we're back. All right. While we were away, Jack said, uh, can't wait to make fun of Avatar some more after this. So before we jump back into the movie, I always like to surprise people with a question. I was really having a hard time with this one, but I think I figured it out. So eliminating anything that is crass. Let's keep this PG-13. There are children here, even though these children, well, you've read the, we, I've been reading the chat. Uh, you all of a sudden are given one of these these gel sleep pods with the duct tape on it, and they're like, you get to control a Navi. You're on Earth. What's the first thing that you're doing? Am I a boy Navi or a girl Navi? What would you prefer? I would prefer a boy Navi. Interesting. Okay. I would just want to walk around like a man all <laughs> smug. <laughs> I and have just pockets. Be a guy, just be a dude. Just be like, eh. just be a dude. I'm just gonna yeah. over explain everything, <laughs> and then I'm gonna like put stuff back where it's not supposed to be, even though I say everything's gotta have its own place. And what are other dude things anyway? Yeah, and I'm gonna do a, a lot dude. of well. What you should do is <laughs> okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I would go clothes shopping at a really expensive place and make them try to find stuff that fits me because I've always wanted to be thin. And so I don't want to be like, oh, I'm thin and tall now. Cover my body. Clothing stores. Yeah. I think I think deep down we both just want to be Navi more than we want to be humans. Mm -hmm. I agree. One side comment before we start it back up. Uh, by the way, Lady K Pat says, get on the watching Fern Gully. Boom. It's the whole yeah. family. They knocked it out of the park, folks. Oh, I love this so much. I was going to point out something. We paused it on a frame where I can really see Sigourney Weaver's character over on the side. They dressed her like Ellie Sadler from um, from Jurassic Park. The khaki shorts with also a cuff and the socks up. Um, it's a Those are back in now. Anything that I don't understand comes back in. I just don't understand fashion. I'm not a fashionable person. But what I do understand is how to click I play just... on a VCR. You guys want to start the movie back up? Y'all ready? Ready. Okay, let's take the limit one more time. I'll count three, two, one, go. We're gonna plus play on go. Three, two, one, go. Uh let's see, Aiden says that's just Sigour that's just regular Sigourney Weaver. She takes off her uh her normal skin suit and she's a Navi underneath. I don't understand why he didn't bring his avatar back when he fell asleep in the woods. Um, like before the bulldozer, I was thinking about that during the break. Oh, or at least like park it in a tree or something. Yeah, because even when I play like when I play games that I log in and out of, I if I, so if I play Minecraft, I definitely put myself back in my house instead of just the middle of nowhere when I log out because I'm OCD <laughs> and a nerd. This guy's energy. Yeah, what happened? What happens if you stab the avatar? You die in the real world. <laughs> nah. -uh. I don't know. It's Matrix. I'm using Matrix log logic. Oh, he's mad. Don't you touch my man. Oh, no. How dare you hit a, a man with no use of his legs? Hey, while Jax is here, I just watched a Hacksmith video the other day where he made a bionic hand for somebody. There's companies working with, um, like, uh, uh, they look like those sticky pads you get put on you at the hot. Like what you were talking about with the sleep doctor thing. They make some of those. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I can't think of what they're called right now, but they, you can put them on your forearm. And so people that are missing a hand when they're moving their muscles in their arm, they could open a hand. They could close a hand. It, they can program it to all through a cell phone app. I mean, it's not like super readily available but man it's really close to some some really impressive stuff I, I hope they can get it to where it's like cost prohibitive or like maybe insurance companies will finally start kicking in some kitty for stuff like this because that development is there's a lot of people putting a lot of money in. and i know the hacksmith is just a youtube channel but i feel like they try to do some good and, and they totally they made this cool looking hand from a video game and they were going to borrow one of these bionic hands from a company that's making it and integrate it just to show him. But they thought they were going to give the hand back. But then that company was like, no, nah, just give the kid the hand. And he's a he's a streamer. He's a gamer. And it's the first time he's ever like it, it, he's both instead of using like part of his hand. Yeah, it's dope. It's so cool. Um, that makes me so happy. Yeah, it's neat, man. It's it's the future. Um, Aiden says rude robo gestures win. <laughs> Yeah, the first thing I would do if I had a robo hand was make it flip the bird. Let's be honest. If I had a robot <laughs> hand, if I have a fake hand, like one of those wooden ones from Ikea, the first thing I'm doing, like in, in Zombieland, when he pulls the hand off and he flips the, I would, yes, I would do that. 
when my hand falls asleep, I do that. So Jack says that's interesting. Yeah, it was a really good, um, really good episode. Now, OK, so let's talk about this real quick. I do. There is I have a beef with this movie. There's no need for Giovanni or BC. And I don't mean that we don't have a need for Giovanni or BC in something. But that's the same character that's in some other movies about big monsters like Godzilla King of Monsters, I believe, is the one that's so terrible. It's got a whole character that just repeats what other characters say. And he's the guy that's like, oh, you think it's this? It's really this. And he's in the computer war room and stuff. Those characters need to be nipped. We have like four people running the show here. He's the character that doesn't know how to rotate a PDF. <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's too <laughs> that's too deep. Jack says uh, that's interesting. Oh yeah, here he said that. Um, Chad says yeah, he's the explainer of the plot, though. All right. Well, if anybody's gonna do it, Giovanni okay. Can. Fine. See, um, Chad brought up earlier about Starship Troopers. This gives me the Martian vibes. I'm a huge fan of the Martian. And he spends like a quarter of that movie talking to a screen like that. Kind of like we're doing now. Now, okay, so one thing Cameron does know is incredible, tough actors. Because he's the one that put Michael Bean on the on the map for the first Terminator. And then brought him back for Abyss. Um, tons of tough people in True Lies. I mean, Charlton Heston has a has an eye patch in that movie. It's insane. Um and then Aliens, everybody comments on how that one's more of an action horror as opposed to Alien is more atmospheric, a little bit slower, because that was Ridley Scott. Um, hey, she's back! Her, the line I remember of hers from Fast and the Furious is, I smell skanks. <laughs> when you pull out I the have book... Not, I think I've seen the first Fast and Furious, and that's it. In my opinion, that's the only one you need, except for the second one. The second one bangs the drum. The rest of them I can do without. Although, man, that last one was crazy. It was the one before that one. I was in the theater and I felt embarrassed to be in. You know the kind of stuff I watch. I'm ne I was embarrassed that I paid for a ticket and other people could see that I was in that theater. That's how abysmal that one was. It's uncomprehensible that movie the ninth one the tenth one is even in crazier god i can't even explain jason momoa's character do you remember when you me alex and miranda went to rocky horror picture sh show yeah. oh yeah and they were doing the game on the stage with the balloons and i just the sat the there bitch. like this <laughs> I was so embarrassed, and you were like, "I don't think I've ever seen you get embarrassed I you ever," would be and I just that. couldn't. It's okay for those that don't know at home. The point of the game is is that one person <laughs> holds a balloon on their backside, and then the other person has to pop it using the power of the pelvic thrust, the dance from the time warp. Um, it's totally family friendly. Their clothes are on; it's fine, and you win prizes if you pop your balloon first. I can't believe that. I forgot about that. I can't believe that embarrassed you. Wow. I can't explain it. I have no logical reason why I was like that, but I was. Man. I haven't been. I went to. So when, um, we had a group that I found I recently found out there's another group that's now doing Rocky Horror here again. I want to check it out sometime soon. As soon as we're not under 14 feet of snow. Um, but I we had one in town that did it once a quarter. So like every three months they would they would do one. And it was what's interesting to me about that is they would do it at a place called the Majestics. Really nice theater. A lot of great shows happen. There's really good aesthetic. It's not the best sound in town, but it's a fun it's a fun venue um, right off right off the uh, the Capitol Square. But what's interesting is where we used to go watch uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show was the Plaza, which is next door to a diner called the Majestic. Kind of weird. Yeah, but um, but I checked out. Those were fine. They just didn't do it enough to get the practice, and then it ended up disbanding. But uh, uh, Chad and I checked out uh, the Oriental Theater in Milwaukee. There, that's the longest running Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I believe they do it every other Friday. I think is when they do it. Um, and it's good. It's just they don't have the crowd that that Atlanta has. Uh, the audience didn't know like the stuff to yell back, and 
um i was yelling all the things and people were a couple of times people looked at me like how dare you say those dirty words i'm like it's rocky horror picture show what are you doing this is when we get to yell swear words i was gonna ask were you the person in the audience that was like starts to yell something and realize nobody else is joining in and you oh, just kind of cut off the word. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> so here's something interesting and Chad can back me up on this. I went over to Chad's house one day. Chad is also a lover of Rocky Horror Picture Show and he's a record. He, he has a huge record collection. And so he was like, you should bring some records over when we play D&D next time. And I was like, heck yes. So I grabbed my Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack. So she both, both liked it. I've never listened to that soundtrack just out in the wild. So I didn't know this about me. Do you know what like Pavlov's theory is um remind me so like you take a dog and you get it to do a thing and when it does it right oh. you ring a bell and you give it a treat yeah. and you keep doing that until he just does it when you ring the bell when you play any song from Rocky Horror Picture Show I cannot not say the dirty words out loud he was trying to explain things to me and I was stopping going uh because I, I, I think we made it through damn it Janet we made it through the intro, uh, uh, science fiction, double feature picture show. And then damn it, Janet was where I was like, we have to stop. I was like, I, I can't listen to you. And I'm, I was saying all the things as I was like, we have to turn this off now. I didn't know that about myself until a few <laughs> years ago, because we've been, I've been well over 50 times to the, the plaza. Like it's, it's, I'm bro I'm a broken human now because of that. I can't not do it. Um, which just tells everybody that you don't listen to that record alone. You just have it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've put it. No, well, no, I've listened to it before, but I I sing them at home. When I watch it at home, I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm practicing. <laughs> oh. but, but it's not that I'm like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I have no control over my mouth when I play that. <laughs> it's, it's strange. It's like being hypnotized is what it's like. And I do yeah. not believe in hypnosis. So it's really inconvenient for my brain. <laughs> man that's why i won't i don't think i'll ever be able to do rocky or picture show on this because i don't think that, all the arrows bouncing off i'm sorry i just gotta stop for a second <laughs> guys know. guys guys you come on navi you knew stop just stop you if you had thrown a rocket it would have done more damage anyway um but that's it is so interesting to me because it's like, this is how it is around the world. Like, some countries yeah. are so advanced and some are so primitive. Mm -hmm. Which, not to go primitive, like, why are some so much bigger? Yeah, so much more prepared for mm -hmm. it. Well, money, because they have more money. And, and like, age. So, like, what, you know, not to get too political, but, like, everything going on with Ukraine and Russia. It's a smaller country that hasn't mm -hmm. existed nearly as long as Russia has. So, it's like, of course. Um, I'm surprised. Like, I think it's still going on, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. it's, and yeah. I'm surprised they've been able to hold off that long. And, and, and I'm, I, I think everybody Agreed. does have a lot of uh, uh, theories and stuff, but I, I really wish it would come to an end. I'm really sad that a lot of people had, it seemed like pretty kick-ass lives there. And I mean, not everything's perfect anywhere, but, but it seemed like a nice place. And now it's just war torn as hell. And it wasn't that big. It's like, Jesus Christ, yeah. man. I don't get it, man. I'm all hippy dippy baloney. I want to be hippy dippy baloney in their world. <laughs> it's pretty. It is very pretty. This is the part. Is, we're getting to my favorite part here. We're coming up on it. It it is a slow movie in the first half. Oh, I well, like, to be honest, it's spectacle. It's world building and and yeah. it's a longer uh, first act. So, um, well, I mean, damn, think about the Titanic. Is a you have to buy two cassette tapes to watch Titanic. <laughs> Jesse, I was trying to buy a laser disc player a couple of weeks ago. I got outbid on eBay. That thing went for three hundred dollars when they got done with it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to get a laser disc player. I'm keeping my eyeballs out for it, but I really want one. But I, I don't know. I didn't know eBay was still a thing. Yo, well, I started collecting playing cards, and like that's the best place. Like, I'm trying. I'm getting all the cigarette playing cards. I've already got Camels and Newports. I got to get uh, like Marlboro and then I got to get basic and and, and uh, Virginia Slim playing cards. I want to get all those and eBay's the place for it, man. You can get a lot of cool. That's why I got my VCR that I just got the other day. 
I was just talking about eBay last night. My friend busted the back of her phone mm -hmm. and she doesn't have insurance or Apple care or anything on it. Mm -hmm. Phones are expensive. And they are. It still works. It's just cosmetic. She mm -hmm. took it, but that doesn't matter. I was like, I've never had insurance on a phone. Like back in the day, if I wanted a new phone, I would go on eBay and just get in a, a new phone. I'm going to throw something out there for you. Have you ever had a phone with a cracked screen? Because I haven't. I literally dropped my phone three nights ago. I did ago crack a, a screen lot. one oh, time. You? Okay. I was going to check and say, I've never had a cracked mm -hmm. screen. I've never dropped my phone in the toilet. I've never done. I don't know what it is. I might. I, I guess I'm a little. I also don't pull my phone out a lot. That's another thing, too. I'm bad about getting back to somebody and um well nowadays i don't go much further than my house so the carpet catches it so that's good but <laughs> it skipped across the parking lot the other night and i'm like that's it i broke my streak and i picked it up i'm like okay we're good then it landed face down mm -hmm. i don't understand eric and i had this story we were in taco bell in jacksonville <laughs> okay i can't re i think we were out of high school i think and she had used the bathroom turned around to flush and dropped her flip phone in the toilet, no. picked it up. Like she's like, no. And no. I'm like, what's going on? So she picks it up, hands it to me. What? And I'm just holding it. <laughs> You're such a good friend. <laughs> no, it's just that my brain was not processing fast enough. I would have held it. Let's be honest. I would have held it. <laughs> but like neither one of us were thinking. And it, I almost took it over to the sink to like rinse it off. <laughs> but didn't. Thank God. You run out and go, I need Mexican rice. I need Mexican rice uncooked. Hurry. Stat. Oh man, it was a flip phone though. It probably still worked a bit. It did. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What From you... my recollection, if you... she's still in the chat, she can correct me if I'm wrong. But oh my goodness, those phones were indestructible. Yeah. The next sales. Yeah. Are... Oh man, I love just hanging up on somebody and chunking that thing. <sighs> oh yeah, they were like oh. rugged with all the extra rubber and stuff on them. My yeah, dad, they, they were made for like construction workers. My dad had one. He ran a, he had his own uh, company putting in flooring. And my dad did mostly tile because everybody hates putting in tile. And he, I don't know that he, I don't know that he had an emotion about it. He just was good at it and he knew everybody hated it. So he did. It's kind of why he did a lot of stuff. He smoked like, he vote, smoked Vantage Menthol Ultralights because they're the worst cigarette ever and no one would ever want to bum one. So like he's that's kind of how he plays 4D chess. But he his phone was absolutely covered in grout and and, and concrete because people would hit him up did it and he would pick it up because he's running a business and he's worried oh, I hope everybody's okay. He has a family. He's he, he's a dad, so he's like being responsible. But he's just got his hand dipped off in this, you know, grout and all kinds of other stuff. So one day he was he was complaining about it. he went through like three covers for his phones, had to get a whole other phone. He got so much concrete on it and then he gets a new phone. He's like, all right, I'm going to go to this job. You guys go to this other job. And so I waited till we got to our job. We were putting in carpet. He was going to do a tile job by himself. I gave him like a good hour and I picked up the other workers phone. And I was like, Did it? I didn't say anything. I just beeped him and a few minutes later. Did it? What? Did it? Hey, what you doing? Did it? I just got started mixing grout, man. What do you need? I just seen what's up, man. Like, ah, <laughs> so he had got it all over his brand new phone. I knew he had it on his hands and I knew he would answer. That was his worst employee. <laughs> Easily his worst employee. Oh, no. Like, like which hey, one? Human. Like, what, what are we unplugging? There's a lot, kind of a lot going on here. Um, let's see. Oh, Erica did say. Guy just hit. Erica said, "Dude, I wanted to die, and I didn't even think about it. Dropped the phone and tossed it to you like a hot potato." For instance, I caught a Nokia exactly phone once while fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was a time. Good times, man. My Nokia phone had a uh, custom case on it. I bought in a mall in Victoria, Texas, and it had green tribal on it. That's why I'm saying this all now. It's all connected. I used to bedazzle mine. 
Oh, hell like, yeah. Like I would glue on okay. the jewel to the mm-hmm. phone. Mm-hmm. I nowadays I, we're talking over this really sad part, but that's that's point of the show. I uh, I do that now because I don't think phone cases are. Just, oh, this guy looks miserable. Uh, even though even uh, faux hawk horse is sad. Um, but I uh, I get a cheap case and then I go to like uh, like a Redbubble or Amazon. I buy like a good sticker and then just slap a sticker on it. Um, I've had the one, this the logo from uh, Night Rider on the back of mine. And the more it gets scratched up, the better it looks. I got this one, and I'm super excited. About it. It's very nice, very clean. Look, you can oh, pull it out. Oh, weird! It's like a transformer. But then I can also lay it flat, and then and do yeah. the the MagSafe charging or whatever. Oh, it does. And look, you that. can change it direction, so you can hold it the the long way. I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, that makes sense. So if you're holding like for sideways uh, videos, that's awesome. That's a nice case. It's slim too. Mm-hmm. Um, Brent you want to you want to see something? Sure. Oh yeah. I also have this case mm-hmm. and this case <laughs> and this case. Okay. And this case. Okay. Oh, and those are all the mag uh mag one. Oh, that last one's really cool. That's a fun one. Oh, this is a this is for when we go to the beach. <laughs> oh, it's a life proof like case. Got it's got it. stickers on it though. It's got a, a dead bear on there. My mom mm-hmm. finally gave me a, uh, she had some uh, Grateful Dead Bear uh, pins because people have been giving her Dead Bear stuff. She's not a fan of the Grateful Dead. She likes teddy bears. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she does a ton of Grateful Dead stuff. They don't realize? No, and she just didn't correct a lot of people. You know, it's one of those things. Oh, what um, her? Brand says, get a case from Rock Form, not a sponsor. Sounds like a sponsor. Rock Form. Oh, I did. I am amenable to talking about that. Oh, and another one. That's got like some, uh, looks like it's like. Uh, oh, no, it's this a- is the rock form case he's talking about. There you go. There you go. It's heavy, though. What's its deal? Does it have like a battery or something in it, or is it just tough? It's really tough. Um, it's for people who do like extreme bike shit through the woods Riding and stuff. Riding flying lizards? Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> you already have the phone case for you it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And this, you can do the MagSafe charging with this one, mm-hmm. but you got to take out this middle piece right here. Oh, okay. Anyways, I really did like this case, but it's really heavy. Hmm. I, I did st- have a problem with I st- cases. I still, well, I, I do that. I, I get kind of like obsessed with something. Phone cases, though, I, I, I still plug in a cord to charge my Because the problem is, is that I'm never in the same place so like i i'm a lot of times i'm actually charging my uh phone off of my backup battery that i keep in my backpack and then sometimes i'm running off the car and i could get a whole bunch of stuff to integrate and i did with uh, one of the other phones but that gun is way un- overkill <laughs> it's got a lot going on see in my movie he's gonna rip his face off and be a navi underneath it the whole time A real good gotcha moment. Oh, no. <laughs> well done. Uh, Jack says, I like uh, My Name is Earl. I do, too. I love that show. It's a good one. I think we were talking about. I did not know he was a skateboarder, like oh, a yeah. legit skateboarder. He was good. Um. Yeah, I was just talking about Jason Lee the other day, and I don't. Re- was it on one of these? Why are we talking about Jason Lee? I don't know. Oh, he's in uh, Monster House. That's why he's the boyfriend of the babysitter. And the whole time I was like, "Oh man," but I like him. But I don't want the babysitter to have a boyfriend. The babysitter's supposed to have a crush on the kid she's babysitting. What are we doing here, folks? Yeah. Well, I don't mean that they have to hook up. I'm just saying the crush, you know. You're not supposed to like the boyfriend of the babysitter. I didn't have a babysitter. I had, don't answer the door. <laughs> My babysitter was Ted Turner. That's why I saw Smoking the Bandit a thousand times. That's why I got to see um, Christmas Carol for 24 hours on, not Christmas Carol, but Christmas Story. I can't talk today. Jesus Christ. Good thing we started a show called The Talkover on the day. I just can't talk for the <laughs> life of me. 
God, it's the one thing I can do and today I can't do it. But I, I've been talking about this a lot. I've kind of got this romantic idea of the I, I started like watching a bunch of stuff about Ted Turner, because when I was a kid, people would talk about him sort of negatively. And I was like, what did he what did he because like rich people have probably done something bad. I couldn't really find anything per se that he did that was like bad. Like he he wasn't like Elon. He didn't call somebody a pedo guy. He's not like Trump where he did well all of the things that he did. He just had a lot of money and he bought a bunch of stuff and he was buying up IP the way that Disney is now. And I guess that's probably the same shade because there's a lot of people that get mad at Disney because it is a big, huge monolith of a, of a, you know, Katamari that's rolling around sucking stuff up. But he also wasn't as big as that because he bought Warner Brothers and MGM and realized that was way too much money. He's like, oh, I spent way too much on that. So he sold back a whole ton of stuff and he kept their libraries from uh, pre-1980 something. And that's how Turner Classic Movies were were made. And he wanted to have, t- he had ideas for channels that were different. Back in the day, they said, you got to have so m- much time uh, devoted to news. And he was like, that's a waste of time. Nobody comes to the channel to watch news. It's a, it's a channel that we show movies on. So I'm not going to do news and like you have to do news. And he's like, fine, I'll do it for now. And it was like the worst news ever made. But he started working on CNN. Like that's what he started trying to make was all the time news. He wanted to bring people. He just wanted to make entertainment. And yes, he was making it at a profit. But he, he, he wanted the Braves so that people in the South could watch baseball that he enjoyed. And he picked up all this stuff. Ted Turner was my eternal babysitter. And, and I don't understand why he got all the guff. Maybe just because he was rich and he bought stuff. Hopefully that's it, but well, you come home, you put on TV. Yeah. But like he he I, I got to learn who Joe Bob Briggs is because of, of him. And I, I love Joe Bob. I, I wouldn't, you know, have ever thought of this show if it hadn't been for Joe Bob. Um Who's Joe Bob? He's a movie reviewer that's uh a, a worked his way into he used to write for like magazines and newspapers and stuff. But then where most people learned who he was is he hosted a show called Monster Vision on TBS and they would show old horror movies and he would talk about them beforehand and at commercial breaks. They had two shows that did this. They had Monster Vision and they had Dinner and a Movie. And Dinner and a Movie taught you how to cook a meal while you would watch a movie. So in between like commercial breaks, they would kind of like when we come back from the break here, that's what some of that's based off of is coming back from a commercial break and talking for a minute. But Joe was this like six and a half foot tall redneck that could tell you everything about every unknown movie ever. He's a credible writer and, and just a super funny dude. And it was so weird. It was TBS had a lot of alternative stuff back then too, because they had um, Conan O'Brien show. So all of my off kilter comedy came from Ted, something Ted Turner did. And Joe Bob had that show. Now he's on shutter and they call it the last drive in, but it's basically the same show and they've improved it and made it absolutely perfect. And you can watch them on demand. Um, but if you just enjoy people talking about how weird movies were made, he's the best person to do it. Um, he's like the uncle I wish I had. Um, <laughs> Jax agrees that is a sponsor, the, the, the phone case. But anyway, that's my Ted Turner. Uh, my, that's my Ted talk on Ted Turner. <laughs> Ooh, it's got two wings and two tails. That's a two bird. A two for bird. Okay, so I want to know who in the chat would ride that thing. <laughs> Somebody's got to join Jesse on her death wish of an adventure. <laughs> Christ. See, look how many nostrils it's got. Brandon says hybrid model. Hmm. It's got a big battery. Want one. I want to say it looks a little bit like a Tarask, I think, is the D and D monster, or as Matt Mercer says, Tarask. <laughs> Brandon says uh, he'd ride anything with wheels and some without. There you go. That doesn't have wheels. Hop up on his dirty back and go on an adventure. <laughs> we can take our rock form case <laughs> in case your phone falls. You can just find your phone. <laughs> Chaz just passed. The weird ponytail to tail connection is no for me, dog. <laughs> oh, that's true. You do got to write it the same way you got to. It's a little Steve Irwin. You got to shove your thumb up his b-hole. Steve Irwin didn't do that, by the way. Don't, don't, don't put that out there. You said it. 
editors of the show cut that out interns don't forget write it down <laughs> how do you give college credits can i just tell people that i'm giving them college credits is there a form do i sign a paper can i just say i'm giving you credits and they go okay does that is that how that works yes do i have to take an oath <laughs> It's like a raffle thing. Everybody just puts their name in a hat and okay. then the college pulls out and it's like, yes, you're approved. <laughs> okay. I have to go before the, <laughs> before the council. Um, let's see. Brand says I'm definitely writing it then. All right. There you go, buddy. You guys have fun with that. That's going to be one that I'll stay on the ground and watch. You guys have fun. I'll go get on a roller coaster. Oh, I'll hold your purse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so hard to hold it while you're screaming. Because I carry a big purse. I got you. This is when they all meditate trying to save. So it's, it's usually this part of a movie is where... I start thinking a movie is long. There's usually like a lull in the second act of a, of an action movie to get you kind of prepared for the third. Act. It's not necessarily the end of the second act. Um, but oftentimes I feel like good action movie directors let you take a break and I can point them out in a lot of other movies. The fast and the furious is the one I always think of. Cause as soon as he goes to talk to the cops, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to the bathroom. Um, and I mean, this is super great, super interesting. It looks cool and it's tense. You know, if you're in, you're like, oh, it's going to happen. But we kind of all know some of the things that are going to happen. Um, but it's it's th this these kind of parts where I'm like, all right. I mean, but it's necessary or else you're just going to tire, tire, tire out the audience. Oh, sure. We okay. do the same thing like dancer recitals. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um when i was in marching band like there's always a ballad because mm -hmm. you can't have 20 minutes of just full type. on or you're yeah you're It'll gonna exhaust out. your audience i when mm -hmm. i make mix cds i used to i would put in something slow well you gotta have an ebb and flow to the to an album anyway so that's yeah that makes sense i don't know you ever seen hardcore mix henry CDs. hardcore henry is all go it's have you seen that one never heard of it the whole movie is shot first person they put a camera on the front of someone's face and it's an action oh, movie and it's in real time and it, he jumps out of stuff and he's writing things and things blow up and he's chucking knives and shooting guns it's one of the most crazy movies you've ever seen is hardcore henry it is exciting and you need to watch it on the biggest screen you can find so that way it makes you jump when shit happens i love it makes people sick any kind of movie that some people can't physically make it through i'm here for it um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, aiden uh hardcore henry rocks chad there's no stopping in punk hardcore henry is punk i'm out it's very it's super punk love it is the camera shaky like blair witch project because it's in first person not as bad but similar if you couldn't take blair witch or like cloverfield you probably can't take um hardcore i'd probably ward you off of that like yeah I'm out. Okay. Like Nate and I were <laughs> Nate when I had the I'm sensitive. I got a sensitive head. So so Nate and I when when I had the Trintendo I was doing that that thing. Um, he and I was playing um, Shadow of Colossus, and we played it on the projector, and it was the PS3 version. So it's it's like really old graphics, and he just seemed like upset every episode. And I'm like, why why is this not going well? Like we always have a good back and forth, and he's just like, he just seems not happy and i would ask him a lot like you cool you cool we'll play in this he's like yeah i love this i'm like okay and then he would just seem angry and then we got to the last episode he's like man i'm so glad we're done i got so motion sick every time we would play and we would play for like hours and i was like bro we could have done literally anything else in the world so when hardcore oh, henry was coming out well i was like hey when we watch hardcore henry when i make you watch that let's watch it on a smaller screen and maybe you can handle <laughs> it so maybe if you try those on like a laptop or seriously no joke a cell phone could help maybe um, it's a thought yeah because uh, that i don't hmm? i thought you were gonna read something i was but you said you don't what 
I don't notice a lot of mm -hmm. like how the picture is when I'm watching shows, movies, anything. But when it starts shaking even a little bit, I'm like, what are you doing? Okay. Takes you out of it. And you're, you're focusing on how it looks and not what's actually going on. So even at a minimum, you're not going to be able to enjoy it. So probably skip hardcore Henry. Um, <laughs> I think Brandon says he's, it's like watching John Wick in VR um, as John Wick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Aiden says Cloverfield rocks. He knows the truth. Uh, <laughs> Brand says papers and scissors and Spocks. Oh my god, they're going crazy. And lizards. Uh, Jack says I'll watch Hardcore Henry all day. Oh my god, maybe that's what even he'll... Jackson. I might if he wants to do that one. Is it... I want Jackson to come on this for sure. If he wants to do that one, I would totally do Hardcore Henry. That movie. That would insane. be so much fun. Yeah, the movie is a guy that wakes up. And he's been through kind of like a super soldier um, uh, uh, procedure. And I, there's a few details that I'm forgetting, but I, I want to say he's like told he's, so it's a little bit like crank in that he thinks he's going to die or something. And he's also got this like implanted memory of a dead wife. And so he's basically going after the people that turned him into this killing monster while trying to figure out who he is. So he's kind of a Jason Bourne and he doesn't speak and you uh -huh. never see him because it's, it's first person. And um, and the only real person to explain things is Charlotte Copley. And that's the last person in the world that needs to explain something sanely. Charlotte Copley is an insane person. I love him. But it's it's frenetic. It's like a, it's like a coke fueled fever dream. When did it come out? I want to say like Ish. 2016, 2015, 2016. I think it came out after I moved up here. So. OK, I've never heard of it. And it's a smaller one. Dude, look at all those moons. I want to see that when I go outside. I do like the moons. I do like that a lot. What are the... Is that a... Is that a plant? That giant thing behind them? Oh, Missed I like it. this tribe. They're cool. They got red stripes. Yeah, forget blue. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> This is the part that I like when the Navi fight back. Oh my God. Like, I don't understand. Yes. They were shooting the, the, the giant arrows at the, the helicopters and stuff, but with the numbers and they're just sheer strength. Mm -hmm. the, I don't understand why this incursion didn't happen sooner. Like obliterate the humies. Granted it does, you know, up your level of warfare, but you know, worry about that tomorrow. You know, sometimes it takes a while for people to come together. It's true. Very, very true. Um, Aiden says, nice jacket work. I get one. <laughs> he says, that has to be. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't catch which one it was. Um, Brandon says, our moon is moving further away every year and will cause apocalyptic events way before the sun burns out. When it goes further away? I thought we worried about it getting closer, but it's going further away is going to cause apocalypse. I feel like that would just lower the ocean level i mean if we don't have it then it's really gonna throw things off but it just means we're gonna have more days where mercury's in the microwave again <laughs> mercury's in the microwave <laughs> yeah agents and tides and whatnot yeah you can only drown comfortably once a day so <laughs> it's not that funny <laughs> It's not. <laughs> not another thing I say is. <laughs> That's the joy of it's it. late. It's past my bedtime. My phone has been on do not disturb for uh, an hour. Well, thanks for thanks for sticking it out. I that was the one concern. I was like, I don't know. Jay don't stay up super late, so I don't know about this. Like, this isn't even. This is not the last movie I'm going to watch today. So. No, it's a. Like I could not do this every Friday, but I will do this one Friday. Yeah. I, you know, I will say that, um, I am glad that I'm, I do it every other week. I, I like having a week off cause something breaks every time and it's stressful and I'm glad to have a little bit of break time from it. So. <laughs> I, I just want to get things to a stasis and not have to fix stuff for a while. And I swear to, I swear to everything in existence, I won't tinker ever. It, literally every problem I've had has been me trying to go, okay, this is good. Let's make it better. And then I break it completely and I have to get it back to a, 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 a meh level and i'm just like i understand lord i understand i have a cake and i can't eat it i hear you stop 
<laughs> I'm losing it here, man. I hear you. Um, let's see. Yeah, Aiden saying if the ocean level lo ocean level lowers, it will rise eventually. Rap. Oh, that's a good point. Think about that. It is a soup. Um, Chad says we'll have to build a Death Star to replace it. It's the only solution. Hey, evil uh, comes in round shapes. Um, Brennan says it'll affect tides, global temp, and gravity. Um, the moon. If we lose the moon, we lose. I is that? Hmm. How, I don't know that. How is it affecting us though? I mean, other things it would because it, it is the gravity of that for the tide. Okay, I'll go save the moon. Get. I'll. I'll <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow, okay? I got a uh, thing right you now. Know, I'll put it on my list. <laughs> I've been more fascinated with uh, Mars, like all the stuff we're sending up there. I watched a video the other day. Um, somebody sort of talked through what would happen if we actually did start like landing on Mars. And he talked about like historically what other countries have done when we've you know explored like the Arctic and stuff. Um, how countries will set up their own. Some countries will work together. Some of them will probably go separate and, and do their own studies for their country and where we would land like a lot of times in star wars you know how they'll go to like one planet and everyone's like oh hoth is an ice planet well actually most people are going to land in the same biomes because it's way easier to land in the middle of a planet than the poles of a planet so whatever your the ring of your planet is that's probably what it's going to seem like every time you go there from another planet but they were talking about like setting up space stations i want to set up a video store on mars that's my goal um because no one else will have one so you um read about the the robot that's on mars that's been on mars for like 15 years and then it finally quit and it's and it was like it's going dark it's is this one there's two um so there's the they're, they're both rovers one of them poops and the other one doesn't i one of them's the curiosity and the other one's ah, i can't think of it I don't remember. Yeah, one of them's in the movie The Martian. He's he needs a way to call back to Earth, and he's like he's got to figure out something. He's like, oh wait, I know where there's a cell phone buried in the dirt, and it was that first rover that we sent up there. I think it shut down though, but there's the one that Mark Rober helped make the lander for, and it actually drills core samples and then puts them in a little thing and poops it out the back of it and leaves a trail of these samples so that way while they're working on the next robot, it can come pick up the core samples and stuff. Um, that one, I, that one might be getting close to, that's been up there since, I think that went up, there was a, they launched something in 2020. I remember during pandemic, there was a launch of another thing that might've been supplies. I don't remember what they sent in 2020, but they had a Rover there. It's probably that one then that is getting ready to be done. I can't imagine a battery running that, that much longer. So it was sad. <laughs> The robot's gonna die like Wally on Mars. <laughs> yeah, it was like it's getting dark. <laughs> oh, somebody get up there with some jumper cables, man. You ever like use a cup in the back of the cupboard because you're like, oh, I feel bad for it because no one uses it. No, but I didn't throw my last backpack away because I felt bad that I upgraded to a new backpack. So. No, but yes. No, but yes. I, I okay. have, I have a lot right. of memories. Right. It's a good backpack. I mean, I just wanted a new one. And I got the new one. I was like, look how cool my old one looks. He looks sad. He used to carry all my stuff. He was my buddy. He was my Yoda. He rode on my back. And now I'm just going to throw him away. I can't throw away my old backpack. I store my memories in there. What is that about uh, some people? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been when I was a kid, I would feel bad for toys that like when I got new toys, I would feel bad for the old toys. So a lot of my toys were like, I did too. Yeah, I would assemble stuff from things like my Legos and my G.I. Joe's and my Ghostbuster toys. Those all integrated. Everything went to get like I I to me, everything was one world. And that way I could keep playing with old stuff and I could, we could get new stuff and integrate it into it. But just the man i made some ridiculous shit when i was a kid i, I was i remember i was like <laughs> i was like seven or eight and i made a hovercraft out of legos and then uh 20 years not 20 years i guess it would have been 10 years later a little little more i'm watching the matrix and it looks like I, I it looks remarkably like the nebuchadnezzar the hover ship that's in the matrix and i was like that's what i was building it in my head it looked what the fuck so like <laughs> love legos absolutely love legos 
Um, I did not have Legos as a kid. Mm -hmm. And Erica got me these. It's a succulent Lego set. (laughs) What? So is it real or is it Lego? No, it's Lego. Mm -hmm. But like. It tells you how to build these succulents in it. Oh, okay. All right. It was so awesome. Yeah, Legos are now I have all these Lego sets saved because I want to do so many of them. Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. It's so fun because, like, I did not know this, but, like, Lego has all kinds of pieces. Mm -hmm. And some of the pieces for the succulents were, like, little guns. Oh, and then they repurposed them for for that. Yeah, Etsy makers yeah. will buy piece by piece, or they'll buy big kits and then break them down and make custom ones of their own and make their own instructions and sell them. They're a little more pricey, but you get some cool stuff. Um, I also appreciate Legos. Um, this is a weird thing, but I weirdly appreciate their instructions. I think that more people could take a lesson in making instructions from Lego. I think that's the thing they excel at more because they've made the same bricks over and over, but to be able to give instructions to all over the world and you put something that intricate together, it's pretty good. Um, I love I it. had so much fun. Have you heard about the time that Brandon and I felt like big perverts at Legoland? <laughs> I tell that story every time someone talks about going to Legoland. I was like, you got to have a kid. Yeah, we, that lady told us that we were like, "Whoa, I'm sorry, we didn't know. We're we're gonna go now." I didn't know it was which that. I don't understand. I don't either. I've never been because it's not like, like Legos are just for kids. like that's that's a toy mm-hmm. that fans generations Absolutely. and like grows with you. I thought it was gonna be like a museum or something. I didn't. Oh, this is the part I like. Yes. <laughs> Yes, take out the pilots. There's one shot where one of these guys lands on uh on like the open deck of one of these planes. I'm like, I wish you wish you would just throw a human off of it. <laughs> yeah, like reaching that mech suit. Oh, that's is that Peter Stormare in there? No, is he in this movie? Did I miss Peter Stormare all the time? I can't help you. I don't know who that is. Um that's a lot of missing. Chad the chat can help too. you. Where's Chad? I don't know. I'm behind on the chat too. So let me get back to after the moon. Um, Chad says we'll have to build a Death Star to replace it. It's the only solution. I'm down for that. Um, let's see. Aiden says I'm a J here. That robot. <laughs> that robot was sad. I wish it found some sleek robot companion with three letter name like Eva. He didn't say Eva out of that part. Brandon says I think uh, <laughs> they program it to say some crazy stuff when it was powering down. <laughs> Turn. It's getting dark. To bored to death. I'm out, fam. Uh, Aiden says this is whack. See y'all. Brandon says Mars sucks. <laughs> IRL looks hot. But not in the. She did sing night. herself a song. Like she played a song. I can't remember right now which one it was, but it was like an old, like 1930s, 40s song, and it was really sad. Wait, who? The rover in on Mars when it died. It played. They played a song through the rover. Yeah. <laughs> okay, these nerds have too much free but- time. <laughs> okay, I thought they were just barely getting this stuff to Mars, and you got time to put a MP3 player on your robot. You did you did you sign it up for Spotify? Does it get it out there? It's on the family plan. <laughs> yeah. I you know what I would love. I think they should do this. Is just my opinion, and I'm sure I'm super armchairing this, but like. What I think we should be doing is dropping stuff off into orbits that can ping pong signals back and forth. If we're going to be sending people, at, sending stuff to Mars, we should be dropping off like wireless access points that revolve around a plant. So at least a few times a day, you can line stuff up and then shoot a message within like, a, I don't know, a couple of minutes to, to Mars. It's, it's an incredible distance. I get it. But if you drop off these things throughout space and you're able to drop them where they hit up with like a a gravitational pull. I don't see if we can make satellites talk to each other around our planet. I don't see why we can't make some kind of an array for very cheap. that can just send audio back and forth or text data. Like even if it's that it's such a small amount of data. I don't know. Get on that. I don't have arms on my chair, but I'm with you. (laughs) Elon, get on that man. Um, (laughs) Let's see. He's too busy Xing. Jesus. I can't I can't stand that it. it's called X. Um I can't either. 
Chad says no Peter Stormare. That guy in that mech, I'm going to have to go back when we get done with this and watch. Uh, you know what I haven't done is I haven't watched the special features on this. I Did Cameron do a commentary on the? He had to have, yeah? So I wouldn't mind watching that, actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, maybe it does, but the special feature includes high definition 3D, high definition 2D. It probably has it on there. I'll look later. This right here. This is where I would have landed and just started chucking humans. Not that way. The other way to their death. <laughs> there we go. Bye bye. See you, colonizer. Oh, I'm glad you wore a helmet for that one. This is what I like when they become vengeance. <laughs> Look, there's all those arrows in those cylinders, too. I guess they're not compressed, so... <laughs> Ah, uh, that I don't like. But hey, they knew they was in a damn fight when it landed there. Rogue One. Mm. Rogue One's my second favorite Star Wars movie because it's sad. I like the way that it ends. I think it's brutal. I think it's beautiful. I, I love that there are consequences to actions. And I think it's hysterical. It's gallows humor. And everybody hated it because it was sad. I like it. I meant to check on the break where we were on our Star Wars oh, yeah. list. Because we kind of ventured away from that to watch Vikings. <laughs> this is the second uh, ever chat, uh, or maybe third, auto mod, because I have an auto mod set. I have to decide if I'm going to allow Brandon's next message. So I'll let you decide, Jesse. You're going to hold his... Uh, I'm, I mean, I don't think it'll ban him or anything, but I mean, that'd be pretty funny if it did. It's uh, blocking this for sex based terms. He says, I'd be beating off so many humans. It wouldn't even fit in your palm. It'd be like this. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> no, like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. Yeah, I'm still getting used to a lot of the. I don't know. I know maybe 10% about streaming. I am. I, if it's not apparent, I can just barely do this. So I've got a lot of growth to do. Um, oh, I like her. <laughs> so someone was doing hand paint and they just went. I don't, I don't, I can't believe they can't find some kind of like plant that like eats through, you know, metal or something like to tip their arrows or. Yeah. Also, if they're flinging something that long, they should have used. Um, yeah, that guy's definitely not Peter Stormer. That guy's not even close. Um, But there's a thing I watched a guy make. I can't think of the name of it now, but it's like a sling. It kind of looks like the like lead they were using to try and catch the um oh yeah these guys, um they were trying to catch the winged creatures earlier, but you hook the end of a uh, spear on it and then you you flip it, and so like the end of that flip strap, it, flip it, just flip it, and it, it'll it'll push the end of it as fast as the end of that like a like a like a a whip you know whip goes faster than the speed of sound, so that's why it makes that crack. And so you could take something mm -hmm. that long and just yeah, instead of having to also carry a giant. I'm just telling you, James Cameron, hit me up. I don't have to remake it fully, but you're definitely making three, four and five. I looked at IMDb and I, that I definitely laughed at because that's insane. But when you're making the third one, I'm available. I wasn't when you were making Titanic. I was in high school, but I'm available now. <laughs> Titanic is good. I'm I like it. It's sappy, but man, it looks good. It moves. It sounds good. I love a lot of yes. Throw the humans. Yes. Get off my damn plane. <laughs> no ticket. I'm sorry. That's the I love vengeance so much. Oh, mm -hmm. I get it. We're humans too, but yeah, fuck them. Like let's destroy it. Oh, this guy. I want that paint. It's very, uh, the paint's very, uh, Zelda-y. Some, like, Majora's Mask, kind of. It's very nice. You know, my dad wanted to name me Zelda. Interesting. Interesting. I think you could have rocked Not it. interesting. 
dumb. You don't like Zelda? No. It's a pretty name. It starts with a Z, so it means it's going to stand out. It's sharp at the beginning of it. You got a lot of options. And then your initials then would have been Z-A. Za. That would have been cool. I mean, J- Jay's great. I'm just saying, you could have rocked Zelda. It was either Zel- Dad wanted Zelda or Ursula. Uh, yeah, or just not do Ursula. You can't do Ursula. Ursula's <laughs> funny. Anybody that's named Ursula, it's a cool name. But yeah, I wouldn't have wanted Ursula. Well, and that's the other thing, too. My mom likes to bring up is that if my name, if I had been a girl, my name would have been Jessica. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> it was a basic name back then. I, what? That would have been a great name for me. I would have been amazing, Jessica. I, we would have been dueling I, Jessicas when we met. <laughs> first off, uh-huh. I did not say you would not make an amazing Jessica because you would. Okay. You would slay. <laughs> Secondly, you would have to be Jessica because I'm still claiming Jesse. I would. Go, you know what? I would go by either Jessica <laughs> or Jess. I think that's pretty OK. I mean, you don't really get to choose what you, you know, like people are going to call you whatever. But I do like shortened versions of names anyways. Um, as like a default. I don't think we have to get personal and call each other by our full names here. Yes, grenades. They're called fun pills. Oh, no. Yes. Um, but yeah, I would. I think I would. But I, I like with the C at the end. It's a good cut. Like, it's a good way to end. It's classy. It's got a lot of swoops. It's a good name. I like to think about the shapes of words. Oh, don't pull that. Don't. Well, throw it the other way. Put it back in the two backwards. Yeah. Oh, of <laughs> see, I don't trust my hands to hold my body up like that. I don't trust these to hold all of this. Really? I mean, you were doing CrossFit no. for like ever. You didn't do pull-ups? No. See, I assumed you were doing like Arrow, that TV show with the... Back when you first started oh. CrossFit, I made a joke. I was like, oh, man, you want to come hang out of the house? I can let you pick up my couch and drop it a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we used to joke around. It's like we pay a lot of money just to pick up something and put it right back yeah. down. Mm-hmm. And then clean it. There's <laughs> mm-hmm. your purple plants. Purple water plants. Oh, yeah. What's great about a giant thing landing like that is there might be a survivor to let's God hope there's a survivor. We can beat its ass. Oh, he brought a mess. That's suit. my thing. I don't I'm not scared of a plane crashing. I'm scared of surviving it. Yeah, that's got to be horrifying, huh? Um, World War Z's got a crazy plane crash scene that brad pitt is the only one of two survivors somehow well i guess they all turn into zombies that makes sense but like that would be horrific Mm -hmm. just getting a plane off the tarmac without somebody losing their shit is like nervous enough it makes me nervous enough (laughs) yeah oh he's going see that's where i would have gone i would have gone for the brain oh let's go baby (laughs) Go get a couple more of those mech suits. It'll be a fair fight. Hey, you like my dog? Um, there's definitely a bit of like Displacer Beast energy with that um, with that creature. I don't know when Displacer Beast were come up with, though. That's another D&D monster. I'm wondering if one or the other took a little um, inspiration from each other. But I think they're relatively new. I, d- I didn't start hearing about them until... Well, I'm also new to D&D, so... Um, <laughs> after, after I allowed Brandon to say that, Hayden goes, "Dad, what WTF?" And Brandon goes, "Just Navi things." <laughs> <laughs> Man, you killed my dog, bruh. Look, that's that's when you start a fight. That's what I'm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Those could... machine things mm-hmm. always remind me of the Power Rangers. Yeah, uh, so in those that are called Zords, and that's what they use to fight uh, for... Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. I can't do the rest of the joke. 
I also played it in TTRPG where I was a Power Ranger too. I was a Red Ranger, and I think we all decided to make our Zord some form of cat. And mine was just like a plain house cat as a Zord. So it was always wandering off and shit. It's fun. That 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 system is hilarious. Like they they're very self aware with their writing. Every campaign's like an episode of Power Rangers, and it and we were playing it right when Netflix was putting out that last movie they did, where everybody's all adults in it, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's actually a good time. It's just the I man, it's hard to watch an episode of Power Rangers and not just con oh, and not just uh not just listen to the theme song for twenty minutes. Cause it's it's like way over hype. Like chill out. Mm hmm. My sister and I loved Power Rangers. Oh man, what? Who is your who is your who's your Power Ranger? Who's your favorite Power Ranger? I'm pretty sure back then it was the pink one. Well, you by law you had to be the fan of the pink one. We all had to. I I have a theory that Billy's the secret leader. And what supports that theory? I watch it. Uh, I would recommend starting with the one that is the giant turtle with a stoplight <laughs> on its back, um, where mm -hmm. Billy is <laughs> beating everybody at basketball <laughs> before they go. <laughs> it's insane, man. And then he's kind of sort of the leader in the in the in the the movies because um, the Red Ranger had passed away, and I, I or no, was it the Green Ranger that passed away? Spoiler alert. No, I mean in real life, the actor. Um, I I think it's the Green Rangers. He think he think he killed himself. Um, sadly, like a, just not that long ago. So they didn't have all the original. Yeah, I think it was the or no that maybe they used a different Red Ranger. But either way, um, uh, Billy was very much helming it in the new ones. He's he's still he's still a pretty good actor, man. Um, it's stupid and ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, um, and all of a sudden the Rad Bug shows up. Uh, Chad uh, says, yeah, Jason David Frank. Uh, Chad, was he red or is he green slash white? Hell no. Uh, White Ranger passed away. They used the Red Ranger after Jason. Okay. So the original Jason uh, just, I guess, didn't show up because here's my thing. Here's my, okay, so let's just take a second here. So I have a problem with, I guess if, I guess if we're going to call in this movie, it's a proto enemy, a proto hero, because I used to watch Saved by the Bell and for a little while, things were all cool in the game for Zach Morris. He was the coolest kid in school. He was always running scams. All the ladies love Zach Morris. And then a man named Air Conditioner Slater shows up and starts stealing the poo-poo. Everybody loved the wrestling man with the tan. And I don't like it. When I started watching Power Rangers, the Red Ranger was the cool guy. And then all of a sudden, who's this green guy? I I started rooting for this guy. I didn't even know it was going to get cooler. You tricked me. Stop giving me the cool guy and then give me a cooler cool guy. I don't like the cooler cool guy. I like my cool guy. I think you should bring that up in therapy. Uh, I should just start going to therapy. Uh, yeah, okay. Same. <laughs> When uh, when <laughs> when this is all over, um, there's going to be times where um, Jake and oh, I can't remember. So it's just called her Zoe. Jake and Zoe are just hanging around their Navi house and he's like pretending that he's like out using the bathroom or something. But really, he just doesn't want to take out the trash. and He's just laying there. I would so do that. Like old people that turn off their hearing aids, would you say? <laughs> I can't wait to do that. <laughs> I, I've considered going ahead and talking with somebody uh, in the next few years about something. Um, right now, that's why you. That's why I have so many like earpieces because I can't hear. Um, if it's in a crowd, I have a hard time parsing some of the things out. But it's it's really mild, so I got a long time. But I I spent a lot of time not taking care of my ears, and that's it's catching up to me. But I I kind of look forward to hearing aids too because. Everybody that gets them, uh, nobody regrets getting them. Nobody wants to get them, but they don't regret getting them. So, Brand says, "Hanging in the Navi hood." <laughs> That's pretty good, Mister Rogers. Navi hood. It's a beautiful oh, day for a Navi hood. Oh, he gets a toucher for hood. real. Ah. Oh. He's like, your hands are so small. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, step on me, mommy. She's got uh what's her face energy. Now he's been in life. She's huge. Yeah, get get out of here. Go on. Go on. That's right. Dad, that sound. Go on, kid. It's not it's not a T Rex. That's a It's is it the Raptor? I think it's the Raptor from Jurassic Park. <laughs> I wish I could help you. Where is Chad? Where is Chad? <laughs> I know when well, we need him the most. Um, yeah, Chad <laughs> brings up Lady D as well. Yeah, there's definitely Lady D energy. Um, Aiden says, I got to get a drink and we're talking about Lady D and mommy. <laughs> Chad says to minister. <laughs> yeah, the big step on me, mommy energy. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this guy just chilling in some, some khakis and a t-shirt. Oh. Everybody's in war attire. I'm so glad you're watching the Star Wars movies now because it integrates with this. This belonging to uh, Disney, a.k.a. the D. Um, people really don't like it when I call it that. The big D. Yeah, when the big D owns it and they also have Star Wars in the same house, I mean, I'm I'm okay with it because that's the kind of quality that we want from our... Uh, boy, that other tattoo sucks. I'm sorry, but you get that one covered, dog. Was that your first one? I hated my first one, too. It looked like a girl told me it literally looked like poop on a first date. And I was like, okay, I'll get it fixed. Anyway, sorry. I really thought about getting rid of my first tattoo. Oh, yeah, like getting it covered up or something. Or you could, like, get a tattoo around it that's, like, stupid. <laughs> yeah. <Or> something. <sighs> oh, man. I do like her leaf robe. It's very um, nice. Or shawl. Or what do you want to call it? I want one. I don't I don't like the plug your tail in dance. I'm not crazy about this. Jesus. Brandon is getting another one of these auto mods. It's holding Big D would be so <laughs> mad at the news coming out of NY. I'm going to allow Big D. Well, come on. There's the Big D. There's Peacock. And you can't tell me the Amazon logo doesn't look phallic. I don't care what you say. Look at it again. Especially when there's a bunch of boxes piled up. She loves him for who he is, not what skin he wears. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going to have to tolerate one of the most attractive men I've ever seen in my life. It's a real fucking bummer, man. Oh, now Jax is getting blocked. It by. is sometimes. Well, I'm just saying he's also like, he's a, he's a very attractive man. Yeah. Who played part robot in uh, Salvation. Turn us up. Oh. See, that looks way less papyrus when you do the green stuff to it. I like this. It's texture. Yeah, I would agree with that. We watched Avatar. <laughs> oh, my God. This is how you start out 2024 right here. Holy crap. I'll turn this down a little bit. Well, okay. So if you had to guess roughly how many times you think you've seen this movie. Three. Three. Okay. So, so it's one that does. Including that, tonight. Including that. Okay. So, so do you think it gets better with rewatches? Do you think, what are your thoughts now having seen this a third time? I do think it gets better because there's so much to look at. Mm -hmm. Like the story is similar. Burn gully. <laughs> we get it. I am the only person that hasn't said that tonight. I would like to point that out. For the record, I've been a good boy. <laughs> I don't even remember Fern Gully. I, I'll be honest with you. That's why I don't think I don't make that joke a whole lot because I haven't seen that in God, I don't know how long. I've definitely I definitely like this more than Fern Gully. Um because like I'm definitely somebody's name is CCH Pounder. Did I just read that? That's a real human? Okay, sorry. Um because I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and watch this again on my own. I, I, I do want to check it out and see, because I, I, like I said, I've been watching a lot of stuff with um, interviews and stuff with James Cameron, and, and I'd love to hear his take on it. Um, and so I'm ho just to hear, like, maybe he talks about where it comes from and, and this, that, and the other. But And then we got to watch The Way of Water at some point in time. Maybe that's something we do down the road as well. But next time we do this, I mean, I definitely want to watch... Um, uh, almost here or almost not almost here almost famous we can't we're not watching almost heroes i'm okay with that movie but i'm not doing that on this this show <laughs> um 
Let's see. Let's see what we got in the chat before we get out of here. Uh, Jax is asking about the big D. Ask your dad. Aiden says, go to bed, Jax. He's right. Uh, Brand says, well, don't go to bed, but just ask your dad. Brand says, got to be really good looking to have another species fall for you. Exactly. Um, uh, Brand That's <laughs> fair. Brandon says, Jay, check your snaps. Uh, and then Brandon <laughs> says, next talk over Fern Gully. No, we're not watching Fern Gully. We're not. I can't. I don't want to do that. Could you imagine? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it does stand up, though, after all these years. It Fern, still stands up. Fern Gully or Avatar? No. Back to Avatar. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely does. This movie is... and that, Cameron's from those big filmmakers that we had when we were kids that were making things that do stand the test of time. They're much bigger movies. And so to have one so contemporarily, like have it in, in 2009, to have something that can stand up like this is pretty impressive that people are still able to do it because it definitely is a dying art. I feel like things are more... Um, disposable nowadays now i sound like an old porch uh-huh. man when i get onto that so but talking about we're the that next, age though <laughs> we are well that's a good point yeah i do sit on my porch and, and sit there pissed at my neighbors so um <laughs> I, have, I, I have almost yelled at people before there was one time i almost yelled because somebody was banging on the door next door and i was about to open the door and go are you done yet and you know like brandon does but i was going to add swear words and i looked out the window it was a cop <laughs> knocking on the next door neighbor's house and i went and i shut my window <laughs> I was like, maybe I don't need to yell at people. Yeah, Jax saying Hardcore Henry would be fire. Uh, Jax, we'll talk about this uh, off air, but like I down for that. Talking about the next episode, we're going to do the second part of J is for January. Nate's going to join me for Borning, the Norwegian Fast and the Furious. But it's Borning 3, the third one. That's where we're starting. Um, and that's over on Netflix. So everybody will be able to check that out as well. I am I, I don't want to I don't want to talk about it too much because, I you know, it's a long ways out and scheduling stuff's kind of tricky. But I think a couple of weeks after that, we're doing Barbie. So I'm um, hoping Sarah can I'm come very on. excited for you to do that. Me too. I haven't seen Barbie yet, so I've been waiting to do it on the episode for that and i'm trying to schedule the ones further out from that as well if you made it all this way please go over to the facebook and give us a follow and a like that's how you'll find out when there's stuff i'm not really putting it anywhere else that's how you'll find it there but if you want me to put it somewhere else tell me in comments and things like that but if you don't say anything i just assume i'm perfect baby jesse thank you so much for joining me tonight this was a really, really good time um i don't think that there's a nick fury on this one i think it just i think it just ends we're at the the well i don't know this could have 14 million credits for And I just turned it off. So we're going to end that there. I can't get back to it anyways. Um, So, yeah, come back and see us a couple weeks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks to everybody in the chat. It was a wonderful time. And uh, bye-bye.